happy Friday and welcome to Getting Baked with Crystal, who's ready to get baked! Woo! <laughs> uh, bear with us with the technical difficulties. Stay here. If you're here, stay here. If people are elsewhere, tell them to come here. This is where we're doing it. We're making Loft House cookies tonight, hopefully. I really, really hope so. If you guys saw my Facebook post today, I did make the cookie dough last night. It did come out very much like a cake dough. Very liquidy, not very cookie dough-ish. There was definitely nothing to be done with this dough last night. There's a reason they tell you to refrigerate it for at least three hours. I would definitely recommend overnight. It has solidified, but is still kind of cold cake doughy, if that makes sense. I, I've never refrigerated cake dough. Cake batter? Uh, it does sort of look like pudding, but it is solid. It's not going anywhere. So we are definitely going to be able to roll up some cookies out of this. Um, because that's already made, let's go ahead and preheat our oven to 350. I'm going to get started on that. Hannah with the super chat. Thank you so much, friend. It says, hey, Crystal. Oh, and I guess Dan, too. Dan does all the hard work for these, so let's not forget to appreciate Dan. We give him a bunch of crap all the time. He takes it in good stride, but we really do need to show Dan some appreciation because he does a lot of hard work setting all this up, and I just waltz on in and bake some cookies and waltz on out for him to can, take it back down. Can you show me what a waltz is? This is me waltzing in and out of the kitchen to make cookies. Huh. Like <laughs> never seen a waltz before. Neither have I. <laughs> oh. I'm really hoping these turn out good. Um, we've talked about it since last week. Some people love them, some people hate them. The ones from the store are not going to lie. They do have a weird taste. It's, it's kind of a guilty pleasure. I know they're not the best cookies. I know they're kind of like powdery. I don't even know what it is. I, I don't know what's going on. But they're good. I can't help it. Uh, Alicia with the super chat. Thank you. It says, hi, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, friend. I hope you're having a great evening. Melissa wants to know if I used cake flour or if I fixed the regular flour. We did get cake flour for this. I made a week ago, two weeks ago, I made a coffee cake that wanted cake flour. And I used the trick of for every cup of flour, all-purpose flour, you take out two tablespoons of the flour and replace it with... Carob, not chocolate. <laughs> no, not shoot. Chocolate. Corn, corn starch? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Hold on. I don't want to get this wrong when the, I'm telling it you It was guys. the white stuff, baking powder? No. Baking soda? No, no. Cornmeal? I posted about it. Corn flakes? <laughs> yes, corn flakes. Corn on the cob. That's it. That's definitely it. Okay, here we go. I found the post. Uh... With cornstarch, yes, I was right. Trust yourself. You know what's going on. Cornstarch, yes. Take out two tablespoons out of every cup of flour and replace it with two tablespoons of cornstarch and then sift the heck out of it. The recipe that I had used for that said to sift it five times. So you really want to get it mixed in there really, really, really well. And that's supposed to act like cake flour. I had never made that recipe before, so I couldn't compare it to all-purpose flour, but it was definitely a lighter, fluffier bread, cake, whatever it was. But this time we are using cake flour and it was sifted. I tried to get it as uh, fluffy as I could. I don't know. Like I said, it came out very cake doughy. Tasted it. It tasted like uh, sugar cookie flavored cake it dough, did. batter. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you're just moving it up and down. Uh, Ken wants me to say Dan is the man. Dan is the man. We don't really say that around here, but we should. We really should. Dan is awesome. Dan works really, really hard for me and for you to bring us all these shows all week. Yes, yeah, I got that. Yeah, we're good, we're good, okay. All right, guys, is anybody baking along tonight? I think everybody wanted to watch me make this to see how it turned out before anybody put in any effort. Even if they're not Loft House cookies, they're still gonna be sugar cookies, they're still gonna be good, right? Like, who doesn't like cookies? I'm all about cookies. So what it wants us to do is to measure out three tablespoons of dough per cookie, Use your hands to roll the dough into smooth balls of dough and then put it on the cookie sheet an inch spaced out. And then we're gonna use the bottom of a glass to slightly flatten each ball of dough. I've also got a little dish of flour here so that I can put this in there so it doesn't stick to the cookie balls. Uh, Hannah with another super chat with the Dan Appreciation Train. Thank you, Dan appreciates Thank it. Thank you, I do. <laughs> so, I don't know that I'm gonna measure all of them, but I do wanna get an idea of what three tablespoons of cookie dough looks like. Seems like a lot to me, but who am I to question the recipe? At least when I make it the first time. 
one ha ha. I have nowhere to put it. <laughs> I really didn't think this through. <laughs> this is a little tricky. It's kind of sticky. <laughs> well, these are going to be big ass cookies. Oh, maybe you should like not. Not what? Do not you... make big ass cookies? Yeah. Dan, I love big ass cookies. Have you seen my chocolate chip cookies? Okay, so that is quite a bit of cookie dough. <laughs> it doesn't want to roll in my hands. Who thought of this? I think it was Crystal. <laughs> I'm following the recipe. It's it's definitely, you can see it is a sticky cookie dough. It's, I'm not rolling it. Normally if I rolled it, I'd put it in the palm of my hands and kind of roll it around, but that's that's not happening here. So there's there's our ball. <laughs> Aww. That's really good. Uh, Wolfie is not baking tonight, but they're gone to the Snow Dogs coloring book arrived yesterday and uh, they found their color crowns. Yes, that sounds fun. I just want to eat this. I can't wait for these cookies to be done. Don't mind me. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do so many of these cookies and not have to wash my hands in between everyone after licking the cookie dough off my fingers. Yeah, I was thinking about flouring my hands, and then that's just going to be a mess, and then I worry about adding the extra flour to the outside, but they are kind of floury when you get them from the store. Like I said, they are kind of powdery on the outside, so maybe that's a good idea, but I don't know how to flour my hands and then do all the other things, too. It seems like it's a setup. What they don't show you on these blogs with these recipes is the mess in the kitchen, and the mess on your hands, and all the dirty utensils. That would be more realistic. Uh, Jess is here popping in to say hi. Hello, Jess. Ooh, Amanda made uh, my chocolate chip cookie recipe with AJ and they're in the oven. That's awesome. Did you make them with regular chocolate chips? I've been wanting to do them with the, uh, the, oh, what was it? Can you grab one out so I can see it? The one that BRM Bugs sent us, Dan, in that cupboard. I have not used them yet, but I have been wanting to. What is, I don't remember what it was called. The Toll House Morsels and More. That's right. I've been really wanting to do those, but you know, now I'm going to have all these cookies and I made cinnamon roll coffee cake and biscotti and oh, Lord, there's so much sweets in our house. All right. I think I'm doing a decent job. Just kind of eyeballing it as far as the, uh, the size goes. I really don't want to have to put it in the uh, tablespoon every single time. So hopefully they'll kind of flatten themselves out as they cook. How many cookies does this recipe say it makes? It does not. I don't think we're going to get too many at this size, but that's okay. Because they're really sweet. You can't really eat too many of them. Hey, Alexis, we have uh, your photo on our fridge back there. Can you see yeah, it in the corner? Yeah, we do. Maybe that'll make you, make you happy. Amanda said, uh, we made half milk and half white. Nice. I always want to make white chocolate macadamia cookies, but do you guys have any idea how expensive macadamia nuts are? So expensive. Even like at Aldi where things are cheaper. And the few times I've done it, they haven't turned out as good as when you get them from a place. So it just seems kind of a waste. Uh, Melissa says, the lady says four dozen, but others that have made them said closer to two dozen. <laughs> I'm thinking closer to one dozen. Yeah. Uh, PJ is here. Hello from... <laughs> Thank you for the phonetic spelling. That's how I was going to say it. Putney, Vermont. Oh, I are... keep wanting to say you're in Virginia. Have you made it out of... Have you made it out of quarantine yet? Did you get exposed or are you just like, because you went there, you have to be quarantined? Because I know some places do that. Uncle Yukon says, cashews are better anyway in a white chocolate cookie? I don't know. I like cashews. I pretty much like all nuts. 
<laughs> this really feels like I'm taking a thick cake dough and trying to make cookies out of it. <laughs> uh, they can hear the TV in the background, Dan. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, yes, Dan. Dan is watching hockey. It's Dan versus and, uh, Jess tonight. Oh, Dan's team versus Jess's team, and they are tied. In the third period. Uh, Dr. Detroit with the member super chat. Member for nine months. Awesome. Thank you so much for the support. Engine, engine number nine. Nine months already. Sorry to miss the stream. I'm getting my device fixed. We'll be back at the next getting baked. Awesome. I think this is the last one I have on the calendar because this is the last Friday for uh, this month. I do have the calendar ready for next month. So that will go up uh, probably before the end of the weekend. And I have some stuff that you guys have suggested on it. And a suggestion from Dan. <laughs> These are going to be so big. <laughs> I'm seriously kind of excited for it. Uh, PJ had to quarantine for the first day anyway. Oh, and then his parents had it and didn't realize it due to an issue with their testing. Uh, and he's out now and free. Went to Walmart today in New Hampshire. It's so weird. Like we're we're so deep in California, it takes hours to get to any other state. It's so weird that like, oh, you just went to another state to go to Walmart today. My brother travels for work and often is in like Indiana and <coughs> Wisconsin and whatever other states neighbor Illinois. And it's just so weird to me that you just go to another state for the day. This will be our last one. Then we will smash them down and shove them in the oven. So we didn't make the dough on the show, obviously, but we are going to make the frosting. We do have to let these cool completely. So we're going to have some hangout time tonight. I don't know if I have any good stories for you guys, but we'll come up with something. I do have a package. I don't know if she's here. We do have a package from Brittany. I think it's from Brittany. It's from Amazon. Yeah, sure. Mm. This is really good, you guys. Uh, PJ says, same for me when I was in Michigan. Now I look out my window and can see New Hampshire. And from one hill off in the distance, you can see a mountain that is in Massachusetts. Uh, and then says, hi, Laura. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. We've been watching uh, Amazing Grace, and they were in one place where you could see five different countries from one spot. That's nuts. I mean, I guess they all have to meet up somewhere, and I guess in that place, they five of them all meet up, like around a lake or something. It's interesting. Uh, Wiffy asks, who is your hockey team? His hockey team is the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they are playing the Detroit Red Wings. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. How much flour is going to stick before I... Oh, okay. I'm not going to do this step. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. It's just going to be too sticky. Well, wow, Brittany is here. Hello, Brittany. <laughs> Bierenberg drove to Oklahoma City yesterday to go to some antique shops on Route 66. To... 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 Route 66. Took three hours. Found a great antique shop called Dead People's Stuff. Kind of love it. I love it. That's pretty accurate. That's great. Okay, so I'm not going to squish these down. They're not really balls anyway. They're, they're kind of squished down. That looks like bad news. What looks like bad news? That is a lot. That's a what lot, it said to do. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. That's what it said. They're supposed to be big and fluffy. I'm going with it, Dan. Well, I'm I mean, sticking please. with it. You have no choice. Huh? You have no choice. Well, yeah. It's it's on there. We're doing it. We're doing it. We'll see what it turns out. We have a little bit more here. I don't know if I can make a whole other dozen. Huh? It looks like you have a lot more there. Uh, not. I used more than half for sure. Um, okay, so we're going to put these in for 11 to 12 minutes. It says they are going to look underbaked, but it doesn't matter. Take them out. Uh, don't eat raw cookie dough. May overload delicious senses. Yeah, you may not end up with any cookies because the cookie dough is so good. But... Maybe the cookies are better. Okay, we're gonna go 11 minutes. So, I know some of you guys have been trying out the 
chocolate chip cookie recipe and I did see Will in the real life posted that she thought they didn't look done so she went for a whole nother batch of the the time which I think is like 11 to 12 minutes um and then they came out crunchy when you take cookies out of the oven if you want them to be soft when you eat them they should look a little bit undercooked basically when you take anything out of the oven it should look a little bit undercooked and then they're going to cook a little bit more after they're out of the oven, especially when it's something in a tray. But even a cookie is still going to cook a little bit more. You want to leave it on the, the pan, the in the in the pan, on the pan, whatever it is for a while, so they can finish cooking completely. They're still going to be hot. They don't instantly cool down once you take them out. They continue to cook until they cool completely. So trust the time, at least for the first batch. But I always underbake everything because then they stay soft. The chocolate chip cookies in particular, um, the chocolate chip cookie recipe, will stay soft in the middle, even though it gets a little bit crispy on the outside. After a day or two, they still stay soft in the middle because they're slightly undercooked. Jess T with the super chat. Thank you so much for the support, friend. It says, two cookies are getting ready for their fight. Let's get ready to crumble. I <laughs> love it. Sorry, couldn't resist. I love it. That was great, friend. <laughs> Let's get ready to crumble. I didn't see that coming. I'm like, why are the cookies fighting? What is she doing? <laughs> Uh, cook your tongue. Eat the cookies right away. Did that with the egg rolls that we made. When did we do that? Sunday night? Um, ate one when it was entirely too hot and my, cookie, my tongue was burned for about three days after that. That was not fun at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. All right. So should we start the frost? We should probably wait on the frosting, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, put it in the fridge and make it cold. I don't think we want to really make it cold because we have to spread it on the top. And I think my butter might still be cold. I forgot to take the butter out. It's squishy. We're good. Let's just hang out. What you up to, Dan? Got any I, good stories? Yeah, I was watching the hockey game. Uh, and it's two to two with six minutes left to go. Um, you do have a package here from Brittany. Oh, we do. Let's go ahead and open it. I don't know if she has to work later or anything. So let's get into it. Brittany sent us this. Is it a Jason mask for your face? I don't know what this is. <laughs> okay, it's something for cooking? Is this for the air fryer? It is. It's, I think it's parchment paper, yeah. Okay, place enough food on the parchment to avoid having them fly away or get burned by the heating element. The food should, okay. Oh, okay. It, it's sheets of parchment paper to go in the air fryer. And then it has holes in it. So for cookies? Maybe. Or for anything that you don't want to stick. That we way need, you don't have to spray more, in there? Uh-uh, uh-uh. No. We need more information. Yes, please. Thank you, thank you for sure. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to look it up and see, like, how and why you use them. But I think because I know uh, Wilton in Real Life had posted a video about having the buildup of the um, spray oil, I think it was, that she used building up on the, the pan for the air fryer. So I think this prevents that from happening. Brittany, please confirm or deny. <laughs> is that what I think it is? This is awesome. I did not know that was a thing. We haven't looked much into air fryer stuff. No, no, because I've just been putting it in there and it's been working. Yes. It was great. Today I did try to play, today I did try to put the two remaining egg rolls from last Sunday in there. I cooked them for like 10 minutes and it was, they were sad. They did not work well as leftovers. They do not I work think. well as leftovers. No. You can only make them for what they are. Yes, absolutely. Was that Mooch? Um, this is Mooch. That was Topo. Yeah, we'll have to try that Let's, out. Yeah, um, I'm curious. I'll have to look up cookies in the air fryer because I'm not sure. Uh, Brittany with the member super chat member for 16 months. Thank you so much, friend. Air fryer parchment paper to help with messes and sticky. Okay, yes. Um, like the cheese that leaks out everywhere. Oh, right, right. Uh, Melissa says they also make disposable trays that look like giant cupcake cups that drop into the air fryer. The Zahn is a wonderful place to find anything. They really have everything, don't they? I know, huh? Things I don't even know of. Yes. Sometimes we get those ads, and I'm like, what the heck is this device? And I'll click on it, and it'll be some weird item. But sometimes it's some weird item, and you're like, I need that. Right. And then so, you spend more money. So, um, we do, or we are going to have to try to do, just for, just, just for scientific purposes, because I know you're, like, uh, of purist when it comes to cookies. I am. Uh, we, we should try, we should try some air fryer, something, like, sweet. I mean, we did because. the egg roll things, the sweet egg rolls, no, those I, were a fail. I'm saying, I'm saying more like, 
like cookie, like cook something, yes. that, something that you have a measurable test with, like because you've already right. done oven cookies to be able to compare it to yeah. that. Yes, um, I do have a recipe coming up next month for an air fryer dessert. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but one of you guys did suggest it, and I put that on there. Um, not something I've ever had before. Kind of similar to something we've made before, but I'm excited to see how that turns out. But it is not cookies. Uh, Sandy is here and says, Bradley says, it's Andy Crystal Night. Yes, it is. Hello, Bradley. Thank you for watching. And hello, Sandra. I hope you're feeling okay. Brittany said, I thought about getting the reusable one. Yeah, I haven't looked into it. You know, we got the, the uh, Instapot and we instantly went on line and tried to find any and every accessory we could and weighed the options on what was good and what was not. I actually bought my mom a whole accessory kit for her Instapot. We did not do that with the air fryer. We just started playing with the air fryer. Are you looking at my timer? Yeah, five, five minutes. That's it? Yeah. It was only 11 minutes. Okay. You seem very nervous about these cookies. and They are actually looking perfect. They do. They look huge. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Uh, yes, Aaron, thank you. If you guys are watching me, like what you see. There's 73 of you here and only 39 likes. Please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help, with, you know, YouTube algorithm. Back end stuff nobody really understands. It's a it's due to January already. It is. That went oh by quick. I, I feel like old people every time I'm like, it's already the end of the month. It's already right. the end of the year. That was a quick but, month. Yeah, it's been going by quick. We did a, almost a whole month of shows. We had a, a, a struggle the first week with the, uh, you know, popular sickness and all. But yeah, Was that January? Shows. Yeah, that was the first week of January. It was. Waffle really? Night. Yeah, the first, the first uh, Getting Baked with Crystal was scratched for uh, Waffle Night. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Remember? Okay. You ate ten waffles. I did. That's my record so far. I'm going to try to beat that soon. <laughs> you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Uncle Yukon says, banana cream pie? No, that's not in the works. Would you do a banana cream pie, or you, that's not a... <sighs> my problem with it is I don't like fake banana flavor. I don't even really like banana flavor all that much. Um, it's not out of the question possibility but it is not on the schedule just yet ken wants to know what my favorite crock pot meal is you know being a vegetarian there's a lot of meat based recipes when you look for crock pot recipes it's almost all meat based the crock pot kind of centers on slow cooking meat but there are some options like soups and things i don't know that i really eat anything out yeah, of the crock pot. Use their crock pot you've used it one time when i made starchy starchy potato soup was that uh, in the crock pot that was, that was in the no, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't the crock you pot. That, that was in the Instapot. Insta pot. You don't use the crock pot. No. Only I use the crock pot. Yeah, I don't. So that's a. That's I'm a, trying to think if I've ever eaten anything out of it. Like, we have a crock pot. We even have a red crock pot because I picked it out. I don't think I've ever eaten anything out of the crock pot. Mm -hmm. Oh, nacho cheese. One time I had a party, a uh, paint party with some friends, and everybody brought nacho ingredients, and we filled the crock pot with nacho cheese. Oh, nice. So, my favorite crock pot recipe uh, meal is nachos. Does that count? Right. Any vodka crystal coming? No, probably not tonight. If you guys were watching on Wednesday, I did have um, an icy. Everyone called me a lightweight. It was 8%. Come on. That was but fun. It was, but uh, it kind of ruined my night as far as I had no more energy after about an hour after having it. So, yeah, no, probably not tonight. I, I'm not a drinker, guys. I, I get it. I'm fun. I'm animated when I drink, but it's hard on me to drink. So, no, probably not tonight. Uh, Alicia says, do you like thin mint cookies? I do not like mint in my desserts at all. Like, I don't like candy cane flavored things. I don't like minty cookies or, and, no, mints are mints. I do. Dan does. Dan absolutely does. I Hannah know. says, nachos count. Nachos always count. I just don't like get hit in the face with thin mint. Frozen thin mint. <laughs> oh, geez. Here comes the past again. Uh, Hila the Husky says, veggie chili, veggie soup. Uh, I don't like veggies, <laughs> mostly. Um... Uh, I do like things when they're like cooked down and you're not eating a like spoonful of vegetables. I do want to make some chili soon. My mom actually makes vegetarian chili that she made on uh, Christmas Day. It's really good. And I would like to actually make a from scratch version of chili at some point. But Your white people it. version of chili is definitely different than my Mexican version of chili. Oh, absolutely. But uh, my mom makes it from like, she buys the pouch with all the seasonings already in it. I would like to play around with seasonings and make it the flavors that we like with some vegetarian meat. It's really good with vegetarian meat. I feel like, I mean, it's been over 25 years since I've eaten real meat, but I feel like you can't really tell the difference. What, no veggies, you're a vegetarian. No, no, I'm actually a pastatarian. I really like pasta, and that is what most of my diet consists of. I do eat vegetables. I do eat fruits. I am relatively healthy, but I'm not one to just, like, cook up some vegetables. It's not really my thing. I don't really want vegetable soup with a bunch of soggy vegetables in it. So, yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> uh, my crock pot wouldn't cook chicken or carrots or potatoes, so I fried them after I got home from work. Fried is better anyway. And the crock pot's hard, like, it, it's, for me, like, it makes everything kind of soggy and mushy, and that's not really something I'm that into. Although Dan did, well, it was in the Instapot, Dan made really good uh, potato soup. Although it got very starchy the next day. I do want to play around with more potato soup recipes. Yeah, that was good. I, I thought that was fun. It looked better when it was fresh. Yes. All right, we got about 30 seconds left on these. Oh, they look like muffin tops, you guys. <laughs> they totally look like muffin tops. I think, okay, based on the dough and based on what they look like now, I really have high hopes. I think this might work. I really think so. Oh, Hannah says, my dad has a good potato soup recipe. Please slip into my DMs and let me have that recipe. We use, do we use Jess's recipe? Yeah, okay. um, I think we cut the potatoes too small and it, everything just ended up too starchy. I got too many. And there, yes, there was too many potatoes, even though it uh, had a weight measurement. But I wanted, I wanted more potatoes. Oh my God, you guys. Yes, but when you add more of one ingredient, you have to scale up all the other ingredients as well. Okay, I think we are good. <laughs> they look like muffins. Look, Dan. Fantastic. I love it. So I imagine they'll probably kind of settle and flatten a little bit, but I think we are on the right track here. I'm going to let those sit for a bit, and then I will put them on a cooling rack and do another batch of them. And I don't think I'm going to do anything different. I think that size is perfect. I think that temperature is perfect. They look like they've round up a little bit on the bottom, but not too much. I think we are good. <clears throat> uh, Uncle Yukon says, I scaled up today. They didn't have cake slices, so I bought a whole cake. Seems reasonable to me. I mean, I can't argue with that. <laughs> yes, Misty Van Name Jen, they do look like muffin tops. They look good. I'm very excited for these. I'm waiting to see if they're going to flatten out or if they're going to stay all puffy like that. I hope they're cooked through in the middle. Let me, let me poke one and make sure. Yeah, we're good. That came out clean. I'm um, Alistair Adventure, not sure why you had issue with volume. Everything's good on our end. Yeah, maybe try refreshing. It's not us, it's you two. <laughs> I don't know. So, do you recall anything we have planned for next month? Oh, uh, we do have another million dollars butt at the end of the month. Yes, we are doing that again. I know I a lot of you guys enjoyed that. Is it 26, the mm -hmm. end? The last Saturday of the month. Um, that was a really fun night. If you guys missed out on that, go back and check out the Million Dollars Butt episode that we did. I don't remember what date it was. Ninth, maybe? Sixth? It was earlier this month. It was early. It was the first week, I think. You can find it. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we're going to try that again. Uh, Jess and Steve should be there with us. And that should be a lot of fun. We've got a paint night coming. That would be fun. Um, we'll open. We'll, we'll. I'll put a thread out so people can submit their own million dollars. But, but I can't promise you I'll read any of them. <laughs> I, can't, I can't promise. Uh, but it'll be fun again. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that we, was a lot of fun. Paint night will be good too. We're gonna do it the weekend before Valentine's Day or after. Yes, the weekend right before Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. Uh, with a slight Valentine's Day theme, we are gonna do a free one, so don't worry. You guys don't have to go and uh, purchase. Although you can paint whatever you want, I like to try to stick to the free ones, so you guys don't have to uh, put out a whole bunch of money to be able to participate. Hannah says I tried a TTRPG. Hey Dan, what's that? Tabletop. Tabletop RPG solo campaign this evening was interesting. Now I'm on the hunt for more. Good. I don't know if I know enough about what that is. I mean, I know RPG is role-playing game. We played uh, Azul last night. Yes, we did. Can you grab that? Can I show everybody? If you guys saw Dan's post, he got a new game. Uh, I came home and he was playing the video of, of somebody playing it to try to entice me. Like, hey, does that look fun? Because well, I bought it. <laughs> I have to figure out what your interests are to get you to play some of these games because you just want to do spelling bees <laughs> in tile form. These Mostly. tiles don't have any words. You on. do a really good job of finding very unique games. I'm I'm not real into like more of the same. Like Cards Against Humanity was really fun when we first got it, and then you kind of know all the cards and the shock value is gone. And then you've bought like ten other games, and they're just variations of that. Like what do you mean? And all the ten other games that are variations of that. It, that's cool. That's fun. I got it. 
I want a new game. Give me something new that I haven't seen before. This is something new that I have not seen before. If you guys saw his post, there's tiles. You have to play the tiles. It's kind of complicated to explain, but if you guys are into games and have at least one other person to play with, we play this as a two-player game. Just as fun. I mean, we haven't played it with more than two, but we had a good time playing with just two people. There's some games where they say two to four or something like that, but two players is not quite the same. Like something like Cards Against Humanity. It's not fun with two people. It's just two people. You can't really do anything or three people even. You got to have a bunch of people. This is fun with two people. Um, I don't Did you get this online, Dan? No, I got it at Target. Oh yeah, but, Target had it? Yeah. I'll put it here. I'll put a link just in case anybody wants to check it out. There you go. Cyber Husky um, says they have it, and but haven't played it much. Oh, I loved it. We played three rounds of this last night. I, I'm ready to play again. Like, yeah, what are you that, doing later tonight? That, that was fun. <laughs> it was pretty much just tile, not kind of tile matching, but a little bit more strategy. There's a lot of strategy going into it. Uh, looks Mosaic, yes. It, it's got really neat looking tiles. Very it's a beautiful. very high quality, um, like the quality of the pieces and the boards and everything. Everything's really well made. Um, link is there if you guys want to go check it out. There's uh, videos on YouTube of people playing it. Um, I oh, yeah, I guess I could. It, it's There's a lot that goes into it. There's a board. You play your things. You get a row. You. It's kind I don't of, know how to explain it's it. It's kind like, of like related to... To, to, what's the one where you roll the dice and match the dice? Yahtzee? It's, it's related it to... It was kind of Yahtzee it's, feeling. It's related to Yahtzee. You have to collect so many of certain color to fill in uh, the mosaic to the... You know, to the right of where you're filling it in, and yes. you score points. It's way cooler than what we make it sound. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's fun because when you get to the end, you don't know who's going to win, and you total up all the points, and it's just like a back and forth, and uh, I kick Dan's butt at it. Yes. I don't mind two. Here's the hardest part, is finding a two-player game that is not a card game. Yes. I do not. I'm done with card games. Like, if I never have to play anything against anything in my <laughs> life, I'm done with it. Yeah. Let, no more cards against humanity, or crabs against humidity, or kids against <laughs> adultery, like, I don't That's know, like, I, I, yeah, I think so. Uh, Hannah says, oh, Carcassonne is a fun two-player game. I have not heard of that. Yeah, but that was, that was a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was, it's really, I mean, it's really popular. I never even heard of it before, but, it yeah, it was fun. It has all five stars on Amazon. Oh, I believe it. With 9,000, uh, like, reviews. It's, nice. I absolutely believe it. Yeah. You guys should definitely check that out. Cyber Husky says, we used to play a lot of games when my niece came over when she was in college. She's married now, so I don't see her much anymore. We used to play a lot when Blake was little. We have a ton of games. A lot of them are kid games or, like, you know, younger based games, but I still like the classics, like some sorry and some trouble, which are kind of the same sort of game. Um, I'll still play all those things. We played a ton when he was a kid, all the time we were playing games, but you know, now he's, he's grown and he just wants to play video games with his friends. So we're trying to find stuff that like Dan and I can play for when we can't convince Blake to come out and play with us. I think Blake would enjoy that though. We're going to get him to play that with us next week. Hannah says Carcassony. Okay. I see it. Carcassony? We'll have to check that one out. Cyber Husky says Splendor is a fun game. We'll check that out as well. I like things like backgammon. Nobody wants to play backgammon with me. Sometimes, sometimes I can talk Dan into playing. I will. That game is insanely flawed. <laughs> Why? That game's insanely flawed. What makes it flawed, Dan? It, it, it's just like... If you can just hurry up and get just a couple to the other side right quick, you can block anybody from doing anything in the game. You're just dead. If you can do that. I mean, it's... It's, 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 it's luck, though. Carcassony? Carcassony? Yes. Did I say that right now? Yeah, we'll definitely check those out. I want to get Dan to play Upwards. Uh, life, yes. I, I do like the game of life. I always go to college. Every time. <laughs> Dan never does. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, so Dan doesn't like the word games, but I have not gotten him to play upwards yet. And I'm trying to explain to him, like, Scrabble is all about coming up with words that, like, you th use the Z's and the Q's and the really long words so you can try to get, like, big scores. Upwards is a much smaller board, and you can do so much with, like, a three or four letter word because you just stack S up. Scrabble's for stupid smart people. <laughs> stupid smart stupid people. Stupid smart people. Stupid smart, smart okay. people. Okay, upwards is for stupid people. Then I'm in. Then I'm in. But yeah. it's hard because it's just homework to me. It's like... But it's not like... Look, you can play dog, and then you can turn dog into log, and then you can turn log into law, and then you can turn it into flaw. Like, can you, you turn it into meh? You, 
you can if you want. Uh, I did see there was this really cool Scrabble like documentary though. Like remember we watched it with the World Scrabble Championships. Yes, I did not take Scrabble that. Oh seriously. my gosh, they were like treating it like it was poker. And it was this big tournament in Las Vegas over three or four days, and they followed a few people around, and then at night they were having money games, like in the hotel. Yes. Remember, like, show my hotel, we're having a money game. Yes. And, like, they were betting thousands of dollars on Scrabble. It was so interesting. I don't know what it was called, but it was so oh, interesting. It was very interesting. I love that. It's I, always interesting to see what things people take really, really seriously. Yeah. Uh, Amanda agrees with you that Scrabble is dumb. Charlotte's never played it before. Hannah says Bananagrams is fun too, but better with more people. We did play that once. Uh, we went to, what's her name's house that I can't, I picture her face, but I can't picture her name, but we went over to her house and played Bananagrams once, and that's another word game. That was fun. Was it? Yes. Kelsey's house. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're just looking for like two player easy stuff. That's, yeah. yeah. Without words. Dan doesn't like words. We, we played this other game called It Takes Two, and that was a video game. I had fun with that. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It is a two player co op game. Game that's another you, one that's really, really unique. Yeah, where you had to, like, solve puzzles, but you need both people to, like, solve the puzzles. The overtone of the game was really weird. Yeah, like, the parents are getting divorced, and the kid's crying, and it's a little and depressing. it shrinks the kids down, like, how do you shrink the kids down? The parents shrinks the parents yeah, down. And yeah. then they have to, like, work together to do all these puzzles to, I don't care what. But it's fun. I think that's, it was a thing where, like... Each of us equally could figure stuff out. It wasn't a thing where, like, one person's just like, you have to do this, you have to do this. Like, you'd get to somewhere and you'd do something and not be able to figure out what to do. And then the other person would be like, oh, let's try this. And you really have to work together to yeah. figure out how to get through. So that was fun, except for every now and then they'd have, like, a divorce talk. Like, get a little listen, depressing. I can't wait till you get back to get divorced. I'm like, that is odd. Yeah. That is so odd. Yeah, the, but the storyline's a little weird, I but the gameplay was a lot the, of fun. We played that for a, a lot of while. Fun. We played yeah. for a couple hours. Until we had to make ourselves stop. Yes. Yes. So yeah, if you have like one other person you can play video games with, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Cyber Husky says, Hubby loves games. We have so many games. I'm not as competitive as he is though, so I don't always like playing with him. Um, I am very competitive and Dan is very... Uh... So at one point he made a move that he knew was going to screw me over and like felt bad and was beating himself up about it. Dan doesn't like to hurt other people's feelings. Me, I'm like, if I can blow all your pieces off the board, let's do this. <laughs> I'm all about it. Uh, Aaron says Uno is a good two-player game. We have a couple iterations of Uno, too. We haven't busted I had a nun teach. I had a nun on a train to New York teach me Uno. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I know, huh? Uh, Melissa says you would probably like the new game Wordle. I've heard about that. Yeah, where yeah, it's the five letter. Yeah, um, it reminds me of, what is the game called? We were just talking about it the other day and we saw it at Target. Uh, it's it's four colored pegs and one person puts the pegs in and you have to try to figure out what color the pegs are. I can't remember what that one is called. Uh, Marco says hide and go seek. <laughs> There's not many places to uh, hide in my house. <laughs> right. I... Uh, Amanda wants to know if it's it Takes Two is a game online or for a gaming system? It's Xbox, it's, right? Uh, Xbox or PC. It was like, I have this Game Pass thing. Like, at New Year's, they give you, like, three months of Game Pass for a dollar. So I got it, and it was one of the games that was on there. And I'm like, oh, I heard that one was pretty good. So that's why we played it. I didn't, like, buy it. Well, technically I did because it was a dollar. But after, like, three months, I'll, like, lose access to all the games. So it was on Game Pass. But it was a video. It was That was a video game. That w that was, but I didn't like like I, I was all excited, I was all excited for, um, words with friends, and then like I I love everything about it. The noises are fun. It's whoosh whoosh whoosh. Everybody's playing it, but I sucked at it. It was like you three would letter always words. hand me your phone to find you a word. Right, and I'm sure everybody knew I was lying because. <laughs> because uh because you don't know what a quetzal is <laughs> yeah yeah quichibo <laughs> q-u-i-g-bo quichibo <laughs> yeah so i did not i did not like i didn't really like it after a while i was like wow i like i'm not good at this so the cookies are, are very cool but they're definitely like a lot of it is coming off on the cookie sheet they're not burned it's just very much sticking to the uh silk hat mat so we're, we're losing a little bit of there, kind of crumbly. But it does feel like texturally, it feels fluffy like a cake. It feels like we just made little cake cookies. All right, I'm gonna try to get some of this off. Oh, this 
hockey game's killing me. Uh, Mastermind, yes. Misty Fan Name Jan, I think that is the one. I had that when I was a kid. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah? Did you play with yourself? No, you have to have somebody else set up the pegs. Oh, I probably should have stuck this in the fridge because it's getting really liquidy. But maybe it'll make the cookies flatten a little bit more. Still very sticky. Oh my gosh, come on, come on, come on. Score, score, score. Uh, Alicia says that It Takes Two is also on the PS4. Yes, yeah, it's pretty much on any video game console that's recent. Marco suggesting Battleship. We do have Battleship as well. Battleship Stratego is good. Stratego is pretty fun. But I like new, like, I, that, that Carousel game looks kind of interesting. I like how it's not a card game. I'll check that out. But, you know, these games aren't cheap. <laughs> uh, Charlotte says, haven't played Apples to Apples in years. That used to be fun. We have that as well. Yes. We used to play that a lot with Blake. Yes, that's what started the whole, like, uh, Cards Against Humanity thing. Yes. I'm so excited to try these cookies, Dan. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm excited for you. <laughs> like, I'm excited that, like, so far they, I mean, they're kind of big over there, but so far they look good. What are your feelings on the Loft House cookies, the store-bought ones? I, I'm okay with, like, like, I'm ready to try yours and stuff because they're not going to take the, taste like the store, but to me it's just fake. Yeah. It's just fake, like... Anytime growing up, we'd have them or anything. They they came from Albertsons or Stater Brothers and that clear plastic tin. Or, you know what it was? Like, at, like, NASA. At NASA, you'd walk around in, like, in the different buildings. And everybody had, like, like their own ecosystem That's in there. Small. So sometimes you, you'd go and you'd fix someone's computer. Like, hey, at 11 o'clock, you know, go into this conference room here. And there's going to be, like, $800 million worth of food that everybody brought. <laughs> Just, like, go take a plate. Lot. Right. So I'm like, rats. I tell everybody, like, hey, like, this building's having a party. So then I'd go and I'd show up and there'd be all these cookies there. And I'm like, let's get the cookies. Or at Christmas time, we'd have the cookies. And it was those cookies. And it just tasted like lies. It tasted like fake. So I just wasn't, I wasn't a fan. I was just never a fan of like the fake cookie. You know what I mean? So. I think we're going to like these. I think it's going to be like a little cake. I really, really hope. And uh, Melissa, you were right. It looks like we got about 20 out of this. They're so big. So I don't, I don't prefer them. Like I'll eat one and like I won't be mad. <laughs> but I'm not but like no I'm never reporting back of like, oh my gosh, I had this awesome cookie or anything. I, I just, don't know that I have ever actually purchased them. I think I've only ever had them when other people have them. Yeah, and yeah. And, and like it, it just checks off the list. Like, oh like little Timmy's having a party at school or like we're having a school party, little Timmy's gotta bring something. Yeah, here's You're a gonna... mass appeal store bought thing that comes right. with a dozen in a package. Or like a dozen and a half, like when uh, Blake's friend came and stayed for the week and always brings uh, food because he knows the way to my heart and uh, brought me a giant package of them. Turn <laughs> So the cookie is a lie now. I mean, it's technically, I think it's a cake. Oh my gosh. It's definitely more of a cake texture in the shape of a cookie. So I would say 11 minutes nails it on this recipe. Those seem to come out perfectly. So let's get started on our frosting. Uncle Yukon said he never heard of Loft House cookies. A couple of you guys weren't sure what they were if you've seen them. Next time you're at the grocery store, Walmart, Anywhere you go to get food, check in the, the bakery section. Um, they have like the fresh baked stuff. And then there's usually like tables or displays of some sort with like packaged things. Look there. And it's, it's cookies that look like this. And they're all in the package like at this angle with too much frosting. They have them literally everywhere. Like Stater Brothers, Albertsons, Walmart, Aldi has them. Like every store has some variation of them. The best ones I ever had were s'mores ones I found at Aldi. It was a soft chocolate chip cookie with a marshmallow frosting. And I found them one time like two or three years ago. Have not found them since because Aldi sometimes doesn't carry the same thing twice. 
Hannah says, I dropped $200 on exclusively two-player board games when my dad and I moved in together. That's a lot of money, but what, did you get, like, five games? Because good games are not cheap. But, you know, kid games, it's easy to, to stock up on, you know, Candyland, Light. Oh, I still love Candyland. Like, when little kids do very, very rarely come to my house, I'll bust out, like, some Candyland and Shoots and Ladders, because those were still fun. Cootie? I like Cootie. I got that for Bradley for Christmas this year. They have a new one that comes with a, a little mohawk. Okay, so we're just going to mix together. We're gonna beat the butter for 30 seconds, slowly mix in the powdered sugar one cup at a time, and then milk and vanilla. The prepackaged cupcakes are kind of the same way. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Why was the cookie sad? Uh, I don't know, Crystal. Why was the cookie sad? Because his mom was a wafer so long. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, was that a Chris joke? It was not. Chris is not here tonight. Chris is traveling. Uh, that was uh, Jess T. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Jess, for the entertainment. You're going to comedy jail. Uh, Wolfie pointing out it's uh, getting Baby Crystal MST3K style with Mooch's ears popping Oh, forward. yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Mooch's Batman ears. <laughs> He's just waiting, hoping there's something for him to taste. You, know, you want a little taste of butter? You can have some butter. Yeah, you want some butter? Oh, that's plenty. <laughs> now he's got a taste he's gonna be going for. Topa has discovered the wonders of the electric throw blanket that we keep on the couch in the winter, and pretty much does not leave that thing all day. <laughs> uh, Amanda says AJ has a Candyland game that is. Whoa, where'd it go? Uh. As big as a small carpet, and the player pieces are a good size. We even use ourselves as pieces at times. Oh man, that sounds like so much fun. I've seen the Candyland pieces that you can buy at Walmart for like 50 bucks, and I kind of want one just like in the corner, because I love Candyland, but I can't justify that for a decoration. <laughs> That's amazing. One of the best games I have that they do not make anymore, and I will never, like... Look, I still keep Blake's old games. Like I said, the Candyland, the the Shoots and Ladders, the Cootie, those are all here. Um, I hate Connect 4. I've talked about this before. Connect 4 to me is so predictable and boring. I cannot stand it. However, very briefly, they came out with a game that was regular price, but now you can only find it on like eBay for way too much money called Connect 4 Launchers. And it's a plastic tray and then arms that connect a second plastic tray. So two layers of plastic trays. You guys have to Google this. And there's these little things that you like go like this, like a little uh, trebuchet, but not. It's just like you flip the thing and it, it makes the, the piece shoot up and you launch the pieces and try to get connect four. That's amazing. It is not predictable. You might have an idea of where you want your piece to go, but you got to launch it in there and actually get it into there. It's absolutely amazing. I wish they still made it because I would buy it for every kid I know, just like I do with Cootie. But they don't make it anymore, and you can't find it. And I look, every time I'm at any store with games, I always go and look and see, but I think they discontinued it. It's disappointing. Amanda says, the pieces are bigger than normal pieces, but not small child size. But it is fun when we use ourselves. I can imagine. That's great. I did not even know that was a thing. I know they've made more, like, you know, giant Jenga, giant Connect 4, and stuff like that. Um... I don't think there's a game for the child-sized uh, Candyland pieces. I think they're just decoration, but I'm all about it. Uh, Hannah says, sounds dangerous. I like it. It is. Um, I've played it with a handful of small children, and they all love it because, you know, kids love few things more than uh, throwing things. Uncle Yukon says, Cootie was fun when I was a kid last week. Cootie's always fun. Justy says, I was hoping it would be okay to tell jokes every so often. I do this for a friend's stream as well. Please feel free to tell me if and when I get to be too much. Friend, have you been here when Chris is here? 
you can always tell a joke as long as it makes us laugh and then groan. <laughs> it has to be cheesy. Uh, Amanda says, Chris's mom found it at Goodwill and cleaned it up for us to use. That's even better. Hannah had the classic cootie game. I did not know they made a new variation of it. It always came in that, like, tall cardboard box that kids would inevitably rip open down the side because that's what kids do. Oh. Um, but now there's a new one that's in a regular, like, board game box. Thank God, because I hate when games come in weird boxes that you can't stack them with all your other games. It's so frustrating. Um, but they changed the pieces slightly. So that's the one I got for Bradley, because I did notice that there was a uh, mohawk, and he knows that uh, Dan, who he calls Uncle Dan Dan, all by himself, which is funny because another friend's kids called him Dan Dan as well. Uh... Dan has a mohawk. Mohawk, he says. <laughs> he has a mohawk like Dan. Uh, Alicia still has the original Cootie game. It's fun. It's fun to build bugs. There's another one we have. Hey, Dan, can you... On the left side of the red cabinet on the top shelf, there's the... the remember that green and purple game? No, the red cabinet here uh, under the TV. That green and purple game where you stack things. Oh, cranium or could, uh, or could you? I don't think it was called either of those things. It's the one that's in the bag. But I think it was a, a, from that company. This thing? Yes. What's it called? Uh, Triple Triumph. Triple Triumph. What is this? this one was a lot of fun too. So. The game with. Parts? Yes. So this one has a board where you put the pieces on. Oh, like you want some on Yeah. I don't know if they make this anymore either. But this is another one that was just really unique. So each of the pieces has different combinations of red and green on the sides and the bottom. And you have to play a piece, but then like you can only play a, a purple up against this now. So then you have to put a purple there. And then you can only play a green up against this. And then you can play pieces down into it as well like this but the sides have to like the colors have to still match up so another different little like strategy game I don't know if they make this anymore but this one was a lot of fun too just a, a unique thing we found and, and played the heck out of with, with Blake just had this like gem miner game that she got that was like uh I think I played that one out there yeah it was like a kickstarter one and I really liked it and I'm like I'm gonna buy it you know it's probably like 40 bucks and they didn't make that many of them and it didn't get picked up and now they're like three hundred dollars online. Yep. You could yeah, make, just like Connect Four launchers. You can make your own for like twenty bucks. Right. <laughs> but they're like three hundred dollars online. I'm like, ugh. I guess I'm not picking that up. Amanda says AJ has so many games and toys that we are going to clean it up this weekend, or I may just do it while he's at school so he has room for all his Christmas presents. It's overflowing. Uh, Amanda says, "What's the name of that game?" It's Triple Triumph. It's made by the the Cranium people. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see if I can find a link. Um, Amanda, I would suggest, as a child whose mom would go through her bedroom while she was at school and then I'd come home and find trash bags out on the curb and try to figure out what was missing, please involve your child in decisions about what needs to go. Just explain to him that, like, we don't have room for all this stuff and some kids don't have any toys at all, so we need to, you know, spread, spread the love to other people. Really, like, get him involved in it and, and have him... Understand that even if he loves things, if he does not play with them, he can pass them on to somebody else who will, but nothing broke my heart more than, like, coming home and, and things were just in trash bags and trying to figure out what was gone. It's there. I threw a link Yeah, Hasbro Cranium Triple Triumph. Yep. It's not cheap, but it was it was a fun game. I enjoyed it. Um, He might still be a little bit young for that, but it was, it was fun. And yes, Amanda, I do feel you. When you have one kid, you buy your kid everything. Like, I feel for second children. My brother's about to have his second child, my brother and Sandy. And uh, it's exciting because it's a girl, not a boy. So it's going to get some girl stuff. But I feel like there's going to be a lot more like, yeah, we already have that. We already have that. When you have one kid, you're like, my kid needs to experience this. My kid needs to know this. And then you just buy everything. And uh, about half of the things that you love and buy for your kid, they don't even care about. You're just buying it for your own nostalgia. <laughs> Just what happens. Okay, so we want a teaspoon of vanilla and a tablespoon of milk. What's up, Dan? Like your wildlife treasury box that you had to have. Oh, I did. I loved my wildlife treasury box as a kid, and I bought one for Blake online, and I loved it. I was so excited, and uh, he did not care. And I think Bradley has it now. He might still be a little young for it, but I think I sent that to Bradley. Okay, cooking. 
cookies are done. Frosting is mostly done. Mancala was fun when my kid was young. I'm trying to remember what that is. Can you Google that? I know the name, but I don't know what it is visually. No, I never played that. I don't think we had that in my house. Play that, Dan? Oh. No, I did not. No, it didn't, didn't come on the Nintendo. I, I didn't like any board games growing up. My my parents decided to buy me. My parents decided to buy me two player Perfection. <laughs> and Perfection is like so rude. Perfection's the worst game in history. I hate that game. That that might be the source of my anxiety in life. It's just dumb. It's like, hey, you want to like set up this board for a bunch of minutes? By the way, if you don't like, well, like the commercial says, if you don't put the pieces into the slot and make the right selection and you have to be quick because you're racing the clock pop goes perfection <laughs> and then the parts would just go shoot all over my bedroom so much anxiety i would be so mad it was two player perfection and so that means there was it was like a triangle so there was one on each side and you had to push them both down and it's like why would you get me two player perfection there's no two player <laughs> yeah who's gonna play this not them they your parents didn't play game. games with they you they play board games with me and i'm Aww. like i'm like i have a nintendo Oh, Hannah says, what is perfection? Uh, first, before I answer you, Cynthia B., welcome to the RFS fam. Thank you so uh, much yes, for the support. Welcome. With your membership, you get early access to members' first vlogs when Dan puts those up, a couple times a month usually. Um, and you get access to all the uh, stickers and emojis or whatever that uh, you can pop in the chat with my my cartoon um, version and Dan's yes. head. I've been doing Dan TV stuff where I've been putting up like reviews oh, yes. and stuff. Oh yes, you get access to Dan TV yes. stuff as well. Those are member only videos. Um, Hannah, Perfection is the worst game ever. Here, I got a picture of it. I'll put on the screen here. No, oh, I think there's too much liquid in this frosting. I'm gonna have to add more powdered sugar. I should have known not to add all the milk. So perfection is this little tray with a bunch of different shaped pieces. You push the tray down and the timer starts and the whole thing's like, like it's making noise counting down. And it's counting down like an old egg timer. Yes. And you have to put all the pieces in the slots before the timer finishes. If you don't, the tray pops up and the pieces go flying everywhere. So anxiety inducing. I don't know who invented that for a child. They should be punched. How about they should have been put in the perfection chair. <laughs> Can you pull up a picture of Kerplunk? That was my other least favorite game as a child. It says bring up Green Day. A game. Kerplunk game. <laughs> Kerplunk's a really good album. Not a good game. Jesse says, oh no, I hated perfection. Yes. And uh, that effing game, I hate that effing game. So much you blocked it out of your mind. <laughs> Couldn't even remember what it was. Yeah, that was the worst. But I think, like, if you had one kid, I don't know why your parents bought you the two-player version, Dan, but if you had one kid or, or, you know, kids that my brother and I didn't play well together as children, um, so in theory it was a good game for one kid to play by themselves. Here's but, uh, Kerplunk. So, Kerplunk, you would take all these sticks and stick them in holes in this tube. That seems ridiculous. Yes. Who, so, who did that? You would have to do it if you wanted to play. So you'd put all these sticks in forever because it's just holes. So you'd put it in and then find the hole on the other side of this tube, pop it through. So you've got all these hole, uh, the sticks through the holes and then you'd dump a handful of marbles in on top and kind of like a Jenga type thing, like you pull one stick out and you hope no marbles fall. If the marble falls, then like that's your marble. And uh, in theory, you see the bottom tray? It's got four different sections. You're supposed to turn that tube. You can't turn that tube. There's marbles balancing on, what do they call pickup sticks? You cannot do that. It was impossible. So yeah, just worst, worst game. I don't know who invented that either, but put him next to the guy who made perfection. 
No, oh, Dan didn't mention uh, Red Wings beat the Penguins. No, I stopped talking about it after we lost. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. I just, I, I just hung my head and then. <laughs> you over here in shame? Yeah. Was, you know it's because you don't have your penguin shirt and socks and beanie on. If you had done that, your team might have won. Maybe. I am not happy with the consistency of this. I'm going to add a little bit more powdered sugar. So if you make this frosting, I would recommend uh, maybe not adding the milk. Or just uh, add more powdered sugar. Hey, it was a good game. Oh, it was absolutely a good game. But, like, you have nothing to lose because your team's, like, in last place. My team's, like, up the top four in the league. And we lost to, like, Scrum. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. Is there, like, new versions of Kerplunk I'm seeing on the screen where they, like, made it in different colors? A life-size version? Oh, my. Nobody there's, wants to play that. There's different versions of the same stick thing. Nope. Not a fan. To be honest, not even really a fan of Jenga. I did play it uh, drunk at a bar one time, and that was a lot of fun. I two by fours. I remember getting Jenga for, like, my birthday. Uh, for my birthday once, and I played it like once, and I'm like, what do I have to do to set it back up? And then again, <laughs> right. again, see, this, this is why I kind of like board game. Again, another two player game. Right. With nobody to play Jenga with. Yeah, Jenga's not really fun by yourself. No, no, so I don't know. I probably lost like one piece to it. It's super fun. Um, as an adult, I would play Jenga like at a party or something like that, but I'm not like, hey, Crystal, let's like pull out the Jenga. Yeah, it, as a kid, it was not fun at all for me. Yeah, did so not enjoy as it. an adult, like on game night, especially like your house chess, oh my gosh, for sure, like I would play that. That'd be so much fun. Um, at the breweries, they're huge. Yes, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, we went to the underground bowling alley one time yeah. and, and so, uh, played it. It's drunk. definitely a situational game. Yeah, I, I, I'm down for Django with uh, alcohol involved. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we're probably good. It's kind of... Yeah, see, it's really fun to play with Jamie and Eric and Greg because they're super analytical and know what to do. Yes, see, so that that's fun. Everybody's talking crap. Like, that's... But as a kid, like, much like perfection, like, but, if I screw up, I'm just going to make a mess and have to clean it up. But, the, but when I was in fifth grade, Jenga came out, and that was, like, what everybody wanted. Like, everybody yeah. wanted that. Oh, yeah, it was, like, that was, like, the game. So I did get it, and I was like, man. Melissa wants to know if we're adding any color to the frosting. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? Um, You know, I don't know, because they're just white. Look, if you look at this, look, let's look at the picture here. So when you look at the picture here, they're just kind of white with sprinkles on it. I and I noticed, I noticed you have really bougie sprinkles. I do. I have my fancy they're, ones that Terry sent me that are brightly colored. So I was thinking the white would contrast well with that. Right, because you have that. And I hate adding food coloring and then it's all there. over your face. And, uh, Hannah says, wait, wait, wait. Underground bowling alley? Yes, we have an underground bowling alley out here that you actually have to go down a flight of steps. I don't know. What is upstairs from it, Dan? I've never been in there. It was Bex, that restaurant, but now it's a, a Mexican restaurant. Oh, yes. That's yeah. right. But I never, went, I never went there. Yeah, it's just like a flight of stairs downstairs, and then it's it's like a bar and a, six or eight lanes of bowling. It's a really small bowling alley. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not, it, it has a, a bar vibe in there. It's not like uh, when you go to the bowling alley and everything's like brightly lit up and then like people are taking it really seriously and their bowling leagues and stuff. It's like, it feels like a bar when you're in there for sure. And uh, they also serve alcohol to get you even more drunk than you got at the Christmas party. Is that where you went? Yes. Yeah, the company I work for now had a Christmas party at the the third floor of the museum across the street. And then we walked over and uh, continued the party and went underground bowling. In heels, no less. Okay, let's see. Frosting on cookies, all right. Um, yeah, I'm all about that. It, Cause it's like a cake. It really is like a cake. My concern is the frosting's really like fluffy I don't know that it's gonna set and get like that crispness on top, but we're just gonna go for it. Not the best tasting frosting, but you know, we're just following the recipe. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a whole cookie's worth of frosting and cookie dough before. That's have acceptable. A is it? You won't judge me? You know no, I haven't no. had dinner. I won't judge you. Alright. 
Uh, she always says, I've really been wanting to go bowling, but then I always do. Um, I always want to go bowling until I go bowling and then my shoulder hurts really badly. So I would prefer Wii bowling because the controller for Wii bowling is really light. Oh, this might still be a little too... Let's try it. Let's see how it goes. One of these. <laughs> They're so fluffy and squishy. They're like, it's like when you make a cake. I don't know. That's fun. Yeah. But I still feel like this might not be thick enough yet. I am no good at frosting things, but I think we just want it to be flat, not pretty. I do like bowling. Bowling's fun. You don't... Bowling's not good for your arms. Like, no. You're not... You don't have a good time with it. But I like it. I think it's... I enjoy fun. doing it. Like, I grew up going to the bowling alley. My mom and dad were on bowling leagues. My mom worked at the bowling alley for a while. Maybe... I was, I was thinking about trying one, yet, like, maybe a couple weeks ago or whatever. It was, like, Tuesday, and I was coming down Sierra Highway or whatever, and I drove by the bowling alley, and every spot in the bowling alley was taken. I'm like, it was like 1030 in the morning. I'm like, don't you guys have, like, <laughs> like a job or something? But I'm like, man, I should join a mid-afternoon bowling team. It'd be something to do. Yeah, that, looks, that seems fun. Right, okay. I'm, I'm getting the balls out of here, because I think those might be a bit much. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't break a hundred with bowling. It's usually like eighties or nineties. It's so much nicer now that you can't smoke in the the bowling alleys. No, I remember when that was a thing. Yeah, not in the bowling alley, but like in restaurants, I do. I was just old enough that like before they got rid of that. Before they got rid of that, I. Uh, my friends were smoking at like eighteen. Like I wasn't, and then so we'd go to a smoking section and I'd eat, and then. And then my friend Ryan, he'd just sit there and smoke the whole time just because he could. So gross. Just because he could because, like, like, the law was going to change soon. Right. So, yeah, I can't. I don't remember if I was bothered by it or not. I was a kid, so probably not. My high school boyfriend's dad would eat dinner at the dinner table and then light up a cigarette at the dinner table. It was so gross. Imagine you could you used to be able to smoke on airplanes. Ugh, I can't even imagine. Like, airplanes are so anxiety-inducing anyway, and then to have it filled with cigarette smoke? Ugh. I, no, I can't even imagine. Uh, I was in a bowling league as a kid. I never was, but my friends were in a bowling leagues, and they'd have cool prizes. Like at the end, you'd get a your own bowling ball. Yes. Or um, I remember my friends would get uh, season passes to Magic Mountain and stuff like that because that's just around the corner here. Okay, if you're gonna do that, then I need to make this just a little straight up lower. Kind of no, I got crumbs in my frosting. Oh no! Don't tell Crystal. <laughs> oh, I think I need to add a little bit more here. I just want to make the frosting a little bit thicker. I'm trying to just to find a way that I don't have to hold this to yeah. get this over here, but I don't think that's happening. I think I'm in your way too much. I'll just hold it. I have nothing else. Yeah, what else are you doing, Dan? We got movie tickets if we took, took first place. Nice. I was on a league in high school. It was really fun. I would do it. I, I don't know anybody, so I'd be a little shy at first. But and I, I'm not good at bullying. But my friends would do it, and they would be like, it doesn't matter if you're bullying or not. Everybody's just socializing and hanging out. Right. Oh, yeah, my mom stuff. would go and just, like, drink. But they did well. I remember her winning some seasons. She played for a long time. Yeah. And But I, I don't know. Maybe I should join an afternoon bowling team. It's probably just going to be, like, old people, which I love. Probably. I like the boom, boom and grannies. Hey, Dan, huh. you're almost old people. I kind of am. Especially if you're talking about joining a bowling league in the middle of a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Kaiju Boy says, call in Dantix tomorrow, absolutely. Uh, Kaiju Boy is Steve T, correct? Steve, wait, no, Steve something. I don't remember. Your, you won. You need a gold magnet. Did you contact him about that? Oh, I keep I, meaning I, to ask I, you. You know what? Good point. I did not. Please, uh, please message me your... If you want a gold Dantix yeah, head, please, please, Eggman, Dan please, magnet. I forgot about that. Please message me your... Um, uh, what's it called? The house. The house address. Ordinance. <laughs> yes, uh, address. Not the longitude and latitude, please. You're, if you would like a magnet, since you are a winner of Dantix, you have earned one. I'm trying not to make too much on here. We didn't have bowling leagues for under the age of thirty in my town. It was all ages from what my friends were doing. Like it was everybody was doing it. Remember when cosmic bowling started? I did. I was in a lock and bash where like it's all night cosmic bowling. That was really neat. I think I went like once or twice. I, I liked it because like at, at, it's like the middle of the night and like. People are awake. 
<laughs> I don't think they just did it in the middle of the night. They would do it at like 9 or 10 at night. I'm yeah. not talking about just getting locked in, just like when the, the lights and the rave music are on. Alexa, remind me tomorrow at noon to look at a bully league. Okay. I'll remind you. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe, maybe maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need to try a bowling league. If you did one in the evening, my mom might go with you, you know, if, if you're into that sort of thing. She's got her own bowling ball and shoes. I, I was thinking more like the middle of the day. Okay. We're like, you know, I want to know what they're doing in the middle of the day. <laughs> I don't want to do the evening. I like, I would, I would rather do it during like time where I could get away to do it. Watch, it's not going to be anybody actually bowling, it's just the bar is full. <laughs> I know, right? But it was so weird. It was just like at 10 o'clock like in the morning. Do you have a pool leagues or axe throwing leagues where you are? Yes, we have both. We have an axe throwing place that I haven't been to yet, but we have axe throwing leagues. We have cornhole leagues. Uh, we have darts. We have depths, definitely have darts. Oh, my parents played and, the heck out of darts yeah, when I was a kid, too. And we have a pool hall that's got like 40 tables in it. Uh, so, yes, we definitely have all that. I, I enjoy darts. I did enjoy darts. Uh, Dave and Buster's was cool. That place is expensive as heck. But uh, it, it's pretty cool. We don't have one out here. I think the nearest one is Santa Clarita. No, when we go to Vid Summit, they host a private party there. So they like give us one of those like full cards of stuff, like money on there. And you just go around and do whatever you want. And they feed us and drink us. <laughs> and, did uh, they drink you? Yeah, it was really cool. This one has, like, good and plenty looking things in it. Yeah, you have a lot of interesting uh, sprinkles there. Terry sent me these from S Sweet Apolita. And it was, like, a mystery thing that she bought. And they just sent me all kinds of mystery sprinkle packages. This is the one where you see the videos, like, on Instagram and probably on the TikTok, where they're dumping the different types of sprinkles in and mixing them together in a bowl. See, the thing I'm worried about, though, is, like, I don't have bowling skills, so I'm afraid that, like, you know, the people would like me. You just have to find a beginner league. But, like, I just, I suck at bullying. You might have to get your own league together. Like, people who take it seriously might not want you on their team. Yeah, then I don't, because I'm tired of, like, creating the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you just I, want like, to join someone yes, else's? Yes, I just want to join somebody else's something. I don't want to create, I don't want to be the leader of the creation anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that looks that one looks uh that one looks really good. It looks fun. Okay, I'll frost one more and then we will do a taste test. Pictures then taste test. Yes. I used to shoot league darts three nights a week. I liked I liked darts. I liked darts. I liked cricket and and you know whatever five hundred one. Like I was getting pretty decent at it. Um, my friends would uh they were in dart leagues and stuff like that. So they had one of those really nice electronic dart boards. And that was fun. Or sometimes we'd go to like like a bar place and play darts and schooners. No, I didn't go to schooners. My parents did. My parents had like their own darts and like they they would back in the day before the internet even they would go hunt down like the right I don't know what the pieces are called the right dart bit and the right little the tips thing. and the flights and yep, stuff. Yeah, yep. yep. we had a dart. We had actually had a dart shop out here. Where you could get like, and there'd be like a million packs on the wall of flights and tips and stuff. And we would, uh, we'd make dart shirts for my friend's cousin, Dart Dean. And <laughs> we would take the pocket logo and sew two stripes up it. So you could put all three of your darts in your pocket logo and screen print on there. <laughs> but I don't know, I would go to Paul's place out in Acton. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind of fun using my fun sprinkles. I have a huge sprinkle collection, but I rarely make anything I can put sprinkles on. Yeah, you'll have on. to make sure to send it to Terry since she sent you all these. I will. All these Jeffree Star sprinkles or <laughs> what, what was it? Whoever it was from. Sweet Apolita. Sweet Apolita. Sounds like Banana Fofana's cousin. <laughs> a little bit. But more colorful. These are great. These look really good. They do. Put a little more on. I used to go to the skating rink. Was the only thing underage people uh, to do in my town growing up. Oh, uh, I missed the skating. I rink. lived there and I worked there for a while. I'd have to go on Friday and Saturday nights for the skates, and we play like limbo and like we number games and stuff. So my mm -hmm. my random package of sprinkles that she sent me came with this little tube, that's uh, an emergency dose of happy. <laughs> <laughs> like you could put this in your purse in case you need sprinkles later. Okay, let me do a photo. I'm going to get a big plate. I don't want to squish.
suspicion. with me guys gotta take a photo real quick Uh, PJ says they look good, Crystal. Thanks for doing these live streams and for being so consistent with them. They really cure the current anxiety and depression that comes with the current life territory I am in. Oh, friend, I'm glad that we can help. I'm sure, like, all your life changes are very stress-inducing, and we will always be here for you. Every Friday, Saturday, and maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on Blake's school schedule. <laughs> we enjoy that. Honestly, that that's a... a a pleasant side effect to what we do. Like we do this because we love doing it and it's fun and you guys seem to like it. So we're here for you and we make you guys happy and that makes us happy. It's all one big circle of life. Hey Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. I was joining the bowling. I was looking for bowling leagues. Really right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're eating cookies, I'm Dan. Sorry. I'm sorry. These look amazing. Which one do you want? I think we should cut one in half. There's no way we're supposed to be eating. <laughs> Aww, you're there's, no fun. No, there's no way we're supposed to be shoving this in our mouths. Should I cut it or break it? Uh, I don't know. Snowdogs log us the super chat. Thanks, friend. With the unicorn, you want because it looks like that one looks like a unicorn. It does. You're not gonna be able to break it. Just put it in your oh, mouth. You know you just want to house it. Look. Oh, hang on. I gotta get a photo of this. Okay, you get a photo. You get a photo of that. Jess says, "Nice shirt, Dan. I know." Oh, God, who got that for me? <laughs> I think it was Jess. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was Jess. It says, "See, I don't only wear black." I consciously wore that today. <laughs> uh, Jess, the shirt you got me, I washed it, and it turned into a sausage casing. <laughs> it fits, but it shows all the everythings, and I'm bummed because I love that shirt. It fit perfectly before I washed it. <laughs> I gotta get a few different angles so I can look at them later and see how I feel about them. All right, guys, you can see the inside here. That is very clearly a cake. That's not very cookie-ish at all. It's fluffier than a loft house cookie. Did you put the whole thing in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Just said, oh man, did it? You should have told me we could have tried to exchange it. I'm just going to try to lose weight. <laughs> that is really good. That is really, really good. That's very much a cake cookie. It's really good. That is not a loft house from the store fake preservative cookie. But it's got I that agree. same vibe, right? Oh, it, absolutely. It's got that yes. like crumble in your mouth. Who was it? Uh, Amanda S. I don't know. Are you here? You were the one I think that suggested and asked for a recipe. I would try this. It's definitely thicker than a loft house cookie by far, but it's got a very cakey texture, like a thin cupcake. That's really good. Yes, cook with me. It's you. It throws me off when you guys have a screen name on YouTube that doesn't match your name on Facebook and I try to remember who's who. They definitely compare well. We've lost that preservative fake flavor. The frosting is not it. I can tell you that. The frosting is um, a little too thin, even though I added a bunch more powdered sugar. And still very buttery tasting. The frosting is not it. I would definitely play around and try to find a better frosting recipe. Maybe one that's going to set up a little bit better. Because I don't know if this will set and kind of get crispy. We might have to lay them out all flat. The cookie itself. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a little bit thick. 
So maybe if you could smash them down, I, you guys saw, I tried with the cup, everything stuck to it. Maybe just pat it down with your fingers a little bit so that it smashes a little bit flatter because it is definitely thicker, but it's got that like crumbly, it's not quite as dense. It is a little bit more cakey than a loft house cookie. It's not as dense, but it crumbles and falls apart in your mouth and it feels like cookie cake. I highly recommend it. I definitely recommend this recipe. What do you think, Dan? I think it's great. And they have a loud, it's called the Lousy Bowlers League. There you go. It sounds like it's for you. <laughs> but it's 12 weeks, Tuesday nights at 6.20 p.m. in Palmdale. That's like a combination of badness. <laughs> a combination of badness. They don't have bad bowlers in uh, Lancaster? Uh, you know, I'll look, but I don't, I don't see it. As you shove a cookie in your mouth. Yes, absolutely. It is good. Yeah. I highly recommend you guys try this. I also recommend you try the uh, Sweet Apolita. I'm sure they're not cheap because look how freaking fancy they are. But I like the texture of the different, you know, it's not just sprinkles. So maybe you just have a mixture. I think, uh, I think maybe Helen sent us these where there's a different mixture of textures. And obviously you could theme these to whatever holiday. The recipe that I have pinned on the Pinterest page, the lady posted like a dozen different pictures where the sprinkles are like themed for the different holidays. Um, these would be good for a party. People would love these. People would want to know how the heck you made these. They're amazing. I highly recommend this. I, I don't know that this is the nailed it recipe because I, you can see that it was trying to be a copycat of the Loft House cookies, but it's not quite there yet. But you could definitely work with this. Oh, yes. Try this recipe if your taste ever comes back. Oh, do you have the popular sickness loss of uh, taste and smell? Mine lasted entirely too long and I still have some issues with it. People say there are exercises you can do, uh, not just for popular sickness loss of taste and smell, but when people have this issue otherwise, there's things you can do by eating certain things, not like physical exercises, because who wants to do that? Um, eating certain things like spicy things, things that will trigger you to be able to taste or smell. But... I never had much luck with that, and you just have to kind of wait it out, uh, which is horribly disappointing. It came back mostly after a couple few weeks, but it was slow going with certain things, and some things just smell horrible. Coffee still smells disgusting. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, I, this, thumbs up. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I give it like a four out that, of five for that sure. That was way better than I thought thought it was going to be. Yeah? Yeah. I was very hopeful. Once we made the dough last night and I saw how thin it was and how like, like it wasn't dense. Like a cookie dough is real dense and thick. Right. It was more like a cake. So I knew it was going to fluff up well, mm -hmm. but then refrigerating it overnight kind of made me hesitant. But then I pulled it out and it still seemed good. I don't know. The other one seemed to still cook up well. I would recommend once you cook your first batch, put the rest in the refrigerator again. So that it'll stay cold and not, like, runny and stuff. But, yeah, nailed it. Are you going to make more? Am I going to frost more? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll use up my frosting and stuff. Can I move this? You can. Don't knock down the cookies. Uh, Hannah says, do any of your cats insist on going to the bathroom with you? Well, the litter uh, box is here, so... <laughs> I think no. So, in the morning, when I go to shower, Mooch likes to go in the bathroom and just, like, sit on the toilet. But half the time... Partway through, he'll start screaming, and then Dan will have to let him out of the bathroom. So I try to keep him out of there while I'm showering, because then he freaks out and gets all panicky. Kumiko loves to go, uh, anytime we're taking a bath, she loves to go walk on the edge of the tub and, like, bat at your toes and stuff. In the morning when I'm getting ready, Kumiko and Topol like to go in there. Uh, the bathroom window in our bathroom is the one that has direct sunlight with nothing blocking it. No, like, awning or anything. So they love to sit in that window, which, you know, is, is tiny, but they'll sit in that window. So usually Kamiko and Topo are in there with me in the morning. Most of the time when I go to the bathroom, I come out and there's cats at the door waiting for me because I am much faster than they are and don't stand around and wait for them to follow me. Uh, Liz never lost her sense of taste and smell when she had it. You're lucky. Uh, when we had it the first time around, we were, uh, it was, you know, holiday time. We were sitting at home and we were making that chocolate mug cake and I had eggnog ice cream. We'd be eating that for quite a while. And one night we made it and I'm eating it and just going, I can't taste this. Uh, it was eggnog ice cream and chocolate cake and there was no taste to it at all. Uh, Coco May lost her taste first, has had it for over a week now, and just lost her smell. Yeah, give it a couple of weeks. Like, hopefully things will start to come back. Uh, sour cream and onion flavor still tastes a little bit weird to me, which sucks because that's one of my favorite. Uh, some things are okay, some are not, like as far as brands with that flavor. 
Um, ranch dressing, some brands are still really weird to me. But yeah, it definitely messes with you. Uh, Beer on Bug says, oh snap, that reminds me. How went the saga of rebuilding the master bathroom? We are not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> See what had happened was... <laughs> I am a person who does not take purchases lightly. I never just go out and pick a thing, even if it's as simple as a bathtub or a vanity or any sort of project that needs to be done. So we are still in the planning stages and I thought I would like take a while for the planning and then we'd get into it. And then it got cold and I don't want to tear things out and you know, our house is raised up off the ground. So then the air is just going to come in. So we, we are still in the planning stages, but as it gets warmer, we will uh, take care of things right now. We are still showering in the other bathroom. And yes, it has been like four months, five, five months. I'm not going to lie. I'm just a procrastinator and I want things to be perfect. That's all there is to it. And I found a vanity that I love, but I don't think it works with how our plumbing is set up. And there have to be a lot of accommodations to it. And then I get stuck in my head and I have all these tabs open and I can't figure out what I want to do. And this is my life. This is, this is what happens. And this is why I take months to purchase a single item and then have a hard time when it needs to be replaced because I found the perfect one already. This is my life. <laughs> PJ says, I watched so much Zach Morris's trash while I was sick. Oh, that's such a good show. It is. So yeah, I guess I'll just uh, frost up the rest of these and we can hang out while I do that. And then I want to play more board game. I really like that game. I'm excited to show it to Blake and I hope he likes it. He's probably going to be mad that it's too much thinking. He'll do it for like a couple... He'll do it for a like round a or two. Rounds. It takes about a half an hour around, I would say. Because um, we played three last night. It took almost an hour and a half. I have said there's a Catan coming, but... You've it, been saying that for like a month. Yeah, well, so. because every day Amazon keeps saying tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. It was. Can't you just buy it at the store? Um, it was really expensive at the store, mm. and it was like half the price on Amazon. Oh, did you do that thing I did where I bought a record one time because it was super cheap, and then it never showed up? <laughs> the first time. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> supposed to be your Thursday, then Friday, then tomorrow, then Sunday. Now it says Monday. Good news, my Greenhorn record has shipped and says it should be here Friday. What's a Greenhorn? <laughs> it's Roger's other side project. Oh my gosh. I thought you were his other side project. I wish. No, he's got a new side project now. <gasps> we're not going to talk about her. Yeah, let's talk about her for a minute. No, we're not going to talk about her and her pigtails and her doesn't have a real job. We're not going to talk about her. No, is that his uh, midlife crisis girlfriend? Mm, oh yeah, it is. It is. I snooped. I was not happy. He can do better. But whatevs. <laughs> I'm snoring. These are actually relatively easy to frost since it's just flat. I don't feel the pressure that I feel when I'm frosting cupcakes. Yeah, so. which is snoring. <laughs> PJ says, I've never even watched Saved by the Bell. Oh, no? I guess it doesn't really hold up, especially once you know Zach Morris is trash. Right? Would you agree? Uh, yeah. I still, I mean, I liked it. Yeah, but, like, if you had never, if someone had never seen it, do you think they could watch it now and it's going to hold up? No, not if you're one of those woke people. Definitely not. <laughs> well, and especially, like, PJ's younger than us, and there's, yeah. there's so many better options on TV, don't waste your time. Yeah, if you're easily offended, then no. But it was primetime cheesy. It was it was considered cheesy back then, and now it's canceled. Because <laughs> Zach Morris is trash. <laughs> yes, he is. Which is such a genius, uh, such a genius show. Yes, it's great. If you guys have not seen that, and you know what a Saved by the Bell is, or even if you don't, uh, it was a uh, '90s, not '80s, right? It was '90s. It was, it was early '90s, early, yeah. early, early throughout most of the '90s, towards the end when they had the college years, well, year, right. Uh, yeah, it was like a kids sitcom kind of thing. It was like Degrassi or well, yeah. Degrassi had like real hard hitting like subject matter. This was this what was are you more talking cheap. about? Jesse Spano did drugs. Remember, she, she was so so excited she, and then she was so scared. She had caffeine pills, <laughs> so it was slight, slightly different. <laughs> hard hitting topics, so that she could study. Yeah, but Zach Morris is trash. Is where they break down the episodes and talk, and just all they do is break down the episodes and talk about the synopsis of each scene. Yes. And, it's, and you're like, wow, like, how did they get away with the show back in the day? Let's go 
going on in the chat there, Dan? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Cover all the bases. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with how easy these were to make. Like, it's definitely a two-day project. It says you can refrigerate the dough for three hours. Um, I did not check it last night. I meant to check it last night to see where we were after three hours. But who wants to make dough and then wait three hours and then come back and make cookies? Just make it one night, come back and make cookies the next day. Much easier that way. The show was canceled three or four times. Was it? Because... It was, before it was called Saved by the Bell, it was like called Miss Bliss's class or something like that. And then they switched up the characters. But after that, I thought it had a good run all the way until the college years. But the first season of Saved by the Bell is completely different than all the rest of the seasons. Yes. They only kept Zack and Lisa Turtle, and they got rid of everybody else pretty much. Was it the college years where, I went and saw it filmed once, where they still had Mr. Belding and Screech, but nobody else was there? Uh, yes, Good Morning, Mrs. Bliss. No, that, that was... That was the new. That was Saved by the Bell. The, the new, new class. class. That's the right. Saved by the Bell college years was where they pretty much went to college. It was Lisa and. I don't think I was watching by then. I remember was, there was all kinds of stuff. No, no, it wasn't though. Lisa. It was Kelly and Zach. Lyle Alzado, I think, was like their RA, and then there was a couple. Ooh. There was a, a football player, and then there was a couple of other like. A new cast members and maybe a couple of cameos, but it only lasted once. It only lasted one season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wish Haley Mills had stayed. I liked her a lot as Miss Bliss. Yeah, because after that, they didn't really have a teacher that really stuck around. Mr. Belding was the only constant of the authority figures that. Otherwise, they had gimmicky teachers that were there, like dopey teachers. But none that had, like, a storyline or anything. She just didn't fit. I didn't mind her, but, like, it just she just didn't It just didn't work. I don't like these on the white frosting. There's too much white sprinkles. And those are ed these are edible. Mm-hmm. You wanna try one? Cause, Cause they look, they look like they Christmas balls. Yeah, eat one. Oh, <laughs> watch your teeth. Do I have bling bling in my mouth? <laughs> no, it's just white. Boring. Okay. That was just sugar. Yeah, those aren't my favorite. I like this one because it has stars in it. And uh. Big giant good and plenty looking things. They are. What is that? Oh, I heard the crunch. Nope. Sprinkle. Nope. Careful, they will break your teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, Jess. Oh, oh my no. expensive sprinkles are running everywhere. No. Get back on there. They were good and plenty looking. Yeah, but they were not chewy. <laughs> they were neither good nor plenty. There's a crunch, but that was a crunch. That, that was, like, not the good crunch. No. <laughs> all right, let me scoop up all my extra sprinkles. Yeah, those are, those are expensive. No, no, something hit the floor. No. Uh-oh, Mooch is officially awake now. <laughs> this is going to be the battle of Mooch because he's just going to want to come over here. No. You got oh, to so, stay back. Uh, uh. He's Now that he's like really super old, he doesn't care. He's He doesn't care. He does what he wants. He does what he wants. He don't care how much trouble he gets into. He don't care how many no's have been issued. He doesn't care... He doesn't care about anything. When you're not here, he just walks around the house and squawks all day long. The only time he doesn't squawk is when I'm holding him. Yeah. Um, have you watched the new season of Cobra Kai? No, we watched the first two seasons, and then I didn't go back to it, because then there was another like year in between, so I did not. So I guess we're like two... I think we're like two behind. But right now we're watching Australian Survivor... Uh, during the day when I'm cleaning this stuff, I'll put on some Witcher just to get through the Witcher, which I'm like on s episode three of season two of the Witcher. It was all right. It's just all right. <laughs> just all right. It's just all right. <laughs> this is not sticking at all. But, uh, no, I haven't gone back to it. I will go back to Cobra Kai eventually. I don't know how... Hannah says, I need a new show to watch. There's a gajillion shows to watch. Let's see. 
<laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I rewatched Mindhunter when I was sick, and I really enjoyed that. Which one was Mindhunter? Was it murder? A little bit. Um, if you like Criminal Minds, it's the formation of the behavioral science unit. So that was really We need to watch House. Yes, but right now I am watching three other things. Yes. So Yeah, we need to we need to watch some house. I think we'll really enjoy that. I watched a couple episodes out in Michigan and it was very fun. Frustrated with sprinkles. <laughs> They're going I like everywhere. what you were doing here. Yeah, but the sprinkles aren't sticking anymore. Like it's it's starting the frosting is starting to set, so I will give it that. It is starting to set. I frosted too many cookies. And then the frosting is hardening. And I'm wasting my good sprinkles. No, don't waste your good sprinkles. You know, that's why I was switching over to the, the bulk sprinkles. These are still good. I like these little sugar bits. I don't know, Hannah. Go watch Video Game High School. It's on YouTube. It's free. That's uplifting and happy. That's Dan's favorite show. How many times have you watched it? All the way through. Uh, I'm usually probably good for one a year. I've probably watched all the way through, honestly. I've probably watched it three times. Yeah? It could be four, but I'm thinking it's... I'm, I think I've watched it three times all the way through. One more season. House is one of my top five shows for 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 sure. You watched seven seasons of it. Yeah, so it was good. The, the show formula was good. Like, beginning, middle, end, with a little bit of a through thread, but, like, you know, we're wrap, we're, there's satisfaction at the end of the episodes. It's right. not... Your typical drama. Yeah, but it's not heavy, like, House or... No, or I'm sorry, sorry, uh, like, ER. Like, it's not that, you know... Do you remember on ER when the helicopter fell on the guy? Oh, that my gosh. That was the best episode. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That guy was such a hateable character, and then the helicopter fell on him. Spoiler. I watched uh, Downton Abbey on Amazon Prime. I didn't... I just... Didn't. I don't think that's our type of show. No, it's with Headache Girl. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's with the Headache Girl, but I did not. She has a name. She was a uh, Peggy on Mad Men. Uh, the Fall is an okay series about a serial killer. That's more Ooh. of Crystal's style. The Fall? What's that on? Murder, you say? Tell me more. I don't think I've heard of that one. Uh, I'm enjoying Australian Survivor. I'm not enjoying this season as much. I'm kind of like, I don't really like anybody yet, but, you know, we want to watch a couple episodes of we it. We liked the one guy, and then he got voted off. Right. That was awesome. Totally his karma getting him. Yeah, we did watch... We did go through all of ER. <laughs> Are we talking about that again? I forgot. I'm like, what's she talking about? Yeah, that was a... That was a long time ago. Was that still on when we got together? Yes. I, I watched that in high school because uh, my high school boyfriend's parents worked in hospitals. So, like, that was a relatable thing. And I remember, like, being at their house and watching it. From 2000... Wait. First yeah. episode was in 1994. The last episode yeah. was in 2009. Okay. That was on for a good long time yeah, while we were together. Yeah. Yeah. So we watched, we watched the last few seasons of it. And I have no idea how we got in, like, what happened. Because I always watched it. Oh, okay, okay. Like, I I watched it growing up. I didn't watch much TV, like, once I became, like, late teenage years, but I always watched that. The Fall on Netflix is Irish. Three short seasons. That's not bad. Um, I want... My dad wants to watch uh, 1883 and Yellowstone. Those westerns always look cool, but it's the same thing. It's high noon. Sh boom. Spitting in the spittoon. <laughs> And then, like, the horse gets shot, and then the wagon, and then the, the cook is drunk, and I'm sure those are good, but, like, you know, nothing's going to breed Young Guns and Young Guns too, you know, so. But I don't think those are crystals. Those aren't really crystal style. Um, I, I really like, you know, what I like about, like, um, like, The Witcher is, like, I like that midi, like, that. Like that time period, like like time period and stuff like that with swords and shields and stuff like that. So I, I do, I do like that. Um, I like Schlitz Creek. Okay, so Steve was sending me clips from that today in the group chat, and we watched only an episode or two. We watched a few episodes of the first season, and I think it was a little dry and slow for us. We liked it. I just never went back. We to just it. never went back to yeah, it. Yeah, we like sat and watched some with Anthony one time when he was here. 
and then never went back to it. Oh, mom's here. Hi, mom. Uh, hey, kids. Hi, Ma. Awesome cupcakes. Yeah, you look at it, mom. They look really good. <laughs> they're cookies, but they're just like cupcakes, and they're amazing. I highly recommend. They're like them. those Albertsons cookies you'd always buy that tasted like plastic, but these ones don't. Okay, I'm gonna try to sprinkle them as I go, so the frosting doesn't set. <laughs> Look at how big this one is. That's one sprinkle. That is not edible. Uh, it's in here. It looks like a pearl necklace. Ooh, this one has rock candy in it. What's rock candy? You know what rock candy is. Oh, yes. Like, there's bits of rock candy like the in little, there. Like the little gems. Yes. Yum. Just as I try to watch it, it was meh. Yeah, I think it's just dry Eugene Levy humor. Yeah, you girls off for 15 years. Well, 14 and change. That's a long ass time. That's a long time. That's a long time. American likes to, America loves to like extend things out to the end. Like, remember Lost? <sighs> Should have been three seasons. There were some green sprinkles, but only on one half, apparently. I think I have a good amount of frosting. I think I'll have enough for everything, judging by what's left in there. And it's pretty sweet, so I'm not gonna put too thick of a layer on here. The one in the middle there with the white sprinkles looks so boring. Oh, what else? I like that I can use the same sprinkles and they look different on every cookie. No, I don't want to waste sprinkles. I'm using my expensive sprinkles. Look, I would never have bought these for myself. These are a thing uh, only your bestie can provide. I like the colors in this one. It's got a good range of color. Uh, do you guys watch Next Level Chef? I don't know. No, we don't really watch any like cooking shows or anything. We did a lot. At, we did a lot of like Master Chef. Yeah, back in the and... day. Um, here and there, we'll throw on like one of those Netflix cooking competition where there's Hell's... like eight episodes or something. Hell's Kitchen was fun. Yeah. Uh, but then, but then like, I don't know. I kind of was burnt out on the cooking shows. Every now and then, if there's a good gimmick, I'll watch a couple of them. But it's so formulaic, I just can't. Yeah. I can't I, I, I can't deal with it. Uh, love Law and Order. Crystal, uh, that's Crystal's game yes, too. Yes, I still watch me some Law and Order. I'm really trying not to waste any of my sprinkles. <laughs> Get back on the cookie. I haven't had dinner yet, and I just want to house, like, five of these. I like the rock candy one. That one yeah, good. I wish there was more rock candy. No, in there. I'm not digging this this tray. No. But these two trays so far look good. These these uh, sprinkles are really fun, the the colors and stuff. But I like the texture of the the stars and hearts and the little sugar bits. So I wanted to include some of those as well. All right, hold on, Jess. I'm gonna call you and help you figure it out. Uh oh. Technical support. I see a bunch of sprinkles on this plate and I don't want to waste them. But yeah, I guess, you know what? Cook with me and everybody else. I take it back. Uh, the frosting does seem to be setting. I think it will set. Uh, are you going to watch the new Law and Order? You know, I watched uh, last week's episode of SVU and I saw briefly, I was doing something else and I briefly saw some sort of commercial, but I didn't catch exactly what was going on. So I know there's something new, but I don't know what it was. But yes, yes, I will absolutely watch it. I'm watching the new CSI as well. Uh, Don with the member super chat. Thank you. Letting Dan know that Jess needs him. Yeah, they're on the phone now. He's helping her sort out whatever the issue was. 
So when you guys frost these, I would recommend frosting one cookie and then putting the sprinkles on because they're sticking better one at a time than on that last tray when I put all the frosting on the cookies and then tried to go back and put sprinkles on. It, it does set pretty quickly and it does seem to be solidifying pretty well. It's, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to stack these, but they're still setting. Yes, cook with May. Let me know what you think when you try these. Okay. Like I said, it is definitely a little bit more cakey, but if you want that kind of like soft sugar cookie, this is a good replica and does not taste like preservatives. Problem solved? Dan. Yes. Yeah, you just want to kind of fluff up your frosting in between too because it is starting to set a little bit in the bowl. My mom was really excited for these. She's going to be happy when I bring her one on Monday. This one has lots in it. I wish the good and plenties would settle to the bottom, but they seem to settle to the top. What are we going to do with all of these? Eat them. That's not... I'm going to put them in my mouth and chew them up and swallow them. Dan, Firefly is a space western. Um, You forgot to put overrated space western. Did you watch it? I've seen Firefly because... Okay. Okay, here comes the story. I'm being... What's it called? Is that an edgelord? What's an edgelord? Like, I can't like it no I matter how like much... I word. <laughs> I can't like it no matter how much somebody likes it. Yeah. So... Contrarian. What, yes. So when I go to a bunch of... I go, I've been to a lot of comic book conventions in my day, like a lot, and everybody just talks about Firefly and how great Firefly is, and it's like, I feel like you're not cool unless you love Firefly, right? So I came home one day and I watched it, right? And I'm like, this is horrible horrible <laughs> it, you know what okay it wasn't okay it wasn't that it was horrible it just sucked like <laughs> like and i don't know what the buzz is right i've never seen a group of nerds me included me included that have ch like championed because you've seen you've seen the internet bring back things right. resurrect canceled shows like veronica mars and uh, scrubs and uh, the college show with Joel McHale. Um, yes, community. Community. But if Firefly was so dang good, so dang good, why can't they bring Firefly back to life? It's a good question. Why can't they over the last decade bring Firefly back to life? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so unfortunately, who, who, who said Firefly? Fortunately, Gina, what had happened is I already went too far. Like, to, like, Firefly sucks. <laughs> to now, like, come back to, like, maybe it wasn't so bad and they should bring it back. Only because when you go to conventions and stuff, that's all people talk about. That's all they go, who's that cosplayer? I don't recognize that person. Oh, that's from Firefly. You don't know. Is that how it goes? So now, Gina, I'm stuck on the other side of the fence with no going back. So maybe I want to like it. Maybe if I watched it again, I would like it. Maybe I should try that. Alexa. Remind me tomorrow at 1 o'clock to put on Firefly. Uh-uh, I'm home tomorrow. We're watching what I want to watch. In the no, it's not 1 o'clock in the morning. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to give it another chance because it's been a decade. But, like, I was so irritated by the fact that I thought it stunk. And everybody, like, you have to like, you have to like it. Right. You have to like it. Right. So now, Gina, I'm going to give it another chance. <laughs> because just because you said so yeah well you know because i'm like screw that show but i'm like well why screw it i don't even remember it i just remember going like what was all the hubbub about right so i'm gonna try it again now that i'm middle-aged maybe i'll enjoy it but it doesn't matter if i enjoy the four six seven episodes it's gone <laughs> it's gone like so and it's and why didn't they bring it back they've had years to reboot stuff the smurfs have had movies alvin and the chipmunks have had three of them chipwrecked they did make chipwreck. The Squeakle. Part two was called the Squeakle. <laughs> but they can't bring back the mighty Firefly. You said I'll Hannah's A-L-E-X-A. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, now you're going to be reminded to watch it tomorrow. So I'm going to try to give it another chance uh, because maybe I'm wrong. 
Maybe you May- and, and and you're allowed to love it. Like I, you know, you're, you you can like it, but like I think she left. <laughs> <laughs> She's not your friend anymore. But I get this like like react just knee jerk reaction to be like it was dumb. It was dumb. That was how you really feel, Dan. I wish putting sprinkles on this was easier. Did anybody react to your anger over it, or they all don't, don't want to talk about it? I think I, <laughs> I think I probably piss everyone off. Piss everybody off. Of it. I will. I will. I will try it. Uh, they did a movie to tie up Firefly, right? It was called Andromeda. Bor- they, that's right. They did that movie that like really super bombed ab- about it. Um, <laughs> I am grateful that they did that. They did that show dirty, in my opinion. It was really good. Gina, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it again. Maybe, what if I? But see, what if I like it now? It's the, okay to change your opinion in light of new information. No, there. but like, but it's gone. But yes, that's right. What was it called? It was called something. Serenity. That's what it was. They put out the Serenity movie, which all I remember is seeing a slow shot of a spaceship moving. I bet Steve likes Firefly. You know what? I, Steve fell asleep. Again. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet Steve liked Firefly because he really, 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 really likes The Expanse. And it's a bunch of like... Battlestar, it's it's a bunch of space red tape <laughs> movie, you know, and so I bet I bet he I bet he likes it. But I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try maybe older, more we'll, we'll call it mature air quotes. Dan, <laughs> uh, his taste buds would watch it. Yes, Serenity. Okay, so I'll 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 try it again. I'm sure it's on Pluto for free. <laughs> well, I'm not winning any points. No, I am you're not. not. They've, 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 they're, just, they're just talking amongst themselves. They've, they've stopped addressing me. I'm probably on mute. I'm probably on <laughs> it's mute. It's better that way. But that's right. It was called Serenity. And I don't know how I tied into it, but I know that it, like, balled with the ball. Oh, okay, I've got two more cookies, and then we will wrap this up. So if you have any other... Uh questions or comments about the cookies or Dan's feelings on Firefly, speak now. I mean, it it cost $35 million to make and it made twenty five at the end of the day. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. It didn't do as bad as Pluto Nash, which was like, I think the worst movie of like, almost the worst movie of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is like almost the worst movie of all time. That one made like no money at all. At all. Uh, we watched Firefly, even I enjoyed it, and I don't like westerns. Okay, okay, then let me, let me try it. Let me, let me, let me try it and see if I, if I change my mind. Because it could happen. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Mouse Queen's here. Yo, what's Hello, up, Mouse Queen? Mouse Queen. You missed it. We made cake cookies, and they are amazing. I highly recommend this recipe. Oh, yeah, so you can watch Firefly for free on Tubi. It came out in 2002. I don't think I know anything about that show. I didn't watch any of it. Yeah? Ooh, Cuckoo May said, I bet those would be good with some crushed up cereal on top. Friend, you are just in time. So I don't like to put cereal on, like... I love cereal. We know this. I love the idea of like cereal on donuts. But every time I've ever gotten a donut with cereal on it, it's freaking stale. So it's not a thing I go for. However, like the crazy person that I am. You may have seen this when Dan made waffles. I have Snoochie Boochies. This is the left, <laughs> leftover dust <laughs> from my Oops All Berries. Hang on, there's a berry in here I've got a crush. <laughs> this is my Oops All Berries dust, and I was thinking I could do something with it, like uh, how I make the Cinnamon Toast Crunch coffee cake and I mash up the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, that I could do something like that with this. Let's put one on top of these cookies and see how it tastes. 
Why not? I have one cookie yeah, left. Yeah, one cookie left. Mouse Queen with the super chat. Thank you, friend. I feel awful. I am awful for being late. Was distracted. And no, it wasn't by Regis. It's okay. You don't have to lie to kick it, friend. Marco says special dust. Special dust, man. <laughs> we try this one with me, Dan? Oh. Come on. What? You like snoochie boochies? I know, but I'm trying to stay away from all this sugar and chocolate stuff. Well, stuff. you came to the wrong place. I know. You should just move out. <laughs> I was doing so well, and now easier. I just can't stop eating. Welcome to my world. That looks good. It looks like Christmas all over it. Kind of, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, Helen figured out the membership thing back in the game. Hooray! Thanks to my hubby. No thanks to my walkthrough? No. Well, thanks, mate. All right, Mouse Queen. I'm going to break this in half so you can see what is going on in the middle of this cookie. But not before I shove my These finger in the These look great on camera, by the way. I mean, they look great in real life, but they look great. They photograph well. You can have the small half, Dan. All right, Mouse Queen and anybody else who missed it, here is the inside of the Loft House copycat cookies. We're just going to call these cake cookies. You eat like a million waffles, eat the cookie. That's my, <laughs> that's my yes. problem. And I'm hungry still. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's cake and cookies and frosting and cereal. And oh my god, I want to eat all of them. <laughs> That was good. So what did you eat for dinner last night? Cookies? No. No, it's dinner tonight. I had this huge burrito from this place. It was called the... It was so big. It was called the Mandingo Special. And it had everything on it. It was so big. And I just went... No. And it was gone. Like, I ate that whole thing. You did. Getting tired of popcorn, are we? Absolutely not. I can't wait for the show to be over so I can make more popcorn. Mm. I'm having popcorn issues, though. What's your issue? Oh, it's so good. I just want to eat all of them. So my popcorn issue is... So Hannah sent me popcorn. It was awesome. Jess sent me popcorn, and it was awesome. Like, I really like that too, right? So then I went to the store, and I got bulk popcorn. Because when I started looking online about popcorn, like, popcorn's expensive. So I went and just got some store popcorn, and, like, it was all right. I had, like, 10% fail rate. I was getting... Whoa, shit. <laughs> We're not making popcorn. I was getting 0% fail rate on making popcorn with the popcorn you guys sent me. So I'm like, this is all right, but the popcorn tasted not stale, but like, I don't know. It was like side of the road popcorn. I'm not <laughs> sure. It's just like bucket popcorn, right? So then when we were at Cost Plus Mart, Cost Plus or whatever, I got this cool like popcorn thing with like 10 different popcorns in it, mushroom and purple and extra large and red and baby white. And medium yellow and rainbow popcorn, which is all the popcorns in one, which I've learned that popcorns pop at different rates. So when I was cooking the rainbow popcorn, like some of it was burnt, some of it wasn't because it pops at different temperature, right? Um, lady finger popcorn, which scares me. Blue popcorn and medium white popcorn. <laughs> it's this finger. <laughs> but I, right? But I've had the rainbow popcorn and it failed. Like I, it sucked. Then I had the mushroom popcorn. And it was weird. Like, I like the shape of it. That's the shape of the popcorn when you see caramel corn and stuff, right? Right. But it popped weird. Like, I, I wasn't the happiest with it. So I'll try some more of these. But I'm not happy with any of the other popcorn that didn't come from, like, a really expensive bag Jess sent me. I assume it's expensive. <laughs> and then, like, the real popcorn that Hannah sent me from her uh, Cold Dead Hands. <laughs> so I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm on the hunt to try all the popcorns. But so far, everything out of this has been meh. Well, at least you tried different varieties to learn that you don't like the different yeah, I, varieties. I don't know if I like it or it's the quality. If right. it's the quality of the popcorn, that's the thing. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're just get, taking any any um, corn sticks, corn... Kernels? Corn... <laughs> oh, the... Corn shafts. <laughs> I just don't know if they're taking any corn shafts and like, oh, these are all old and rotten. Let's just like make it in the popcorn and bulk sell it. Like, I don't know like what the... I don't know if they're free range corn or if they're caged corn. Like, I don't know what the corn is. <laughs> yeah, the, the one that you sent me, Jess, is actually really good. It, it pops good on average. I've had zero, like, unpop rate. Like, they all pop and everything. Have you tried kettle corn? I don't want, like, stuff on my popcorn. I put nothing on it. I want no salt, no butter, no nothing. I'm, I'm just, like, eating piles of popcorn because it tastes good to me. 
So I don't put anything like salts or sugars or anything on my popcorn, right? If that's what you mean by kettle corn. Unless kettle corn is the shape of the popcorn before you put all that goo on there, right? I think kettle corn's coated in sugar. Right. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So I'm wondering if it's just quality of popcorn. When I go to Amazon and I look at people's reviews, they complain about Orbel Redenbacher. About what? <laughs> Orbel, Orbel Redenbacher. Or- or- Orville? Oval? Orville? Orville Redenbacher. Orville? Uh, I wasn't <laughs> impressed with the movie either, but it wrapped up oh, a lot of the stories. She aren't. typed okay. a paragraph for you, too, oh, no. about Firefly. She said she just typed slow. She's, she's responding. She didn't uh, abandon you for your rant down right there. I'm talking about the, the movie... Uh, and what but, they're all uh, doing. With so. Firefly, but the cast is all older. It doesn't matter. Nathan Fillion is on the TV show The Rookie. Alan Turek is on Resident Alien. Oh, yeah, huh? Gina Torres is on 911 Lone Star. Basically, they're all working on different shows. Well, that's okay. They can come back and do, like, real time later. It's really popular to, to have shows come back where they're, like, real time later. Yes. You know? Yeah, they're doing uh, Party Downs coming uh, back. They're bringing everybody back except uh, Lizzie <sighs> Kaplan. Man, and I like Party Down, too, so I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, mushroom popcorn sounds it sounds gross. It's only it's the shape of the kernel. It's the shape yes, of the pop kernel. It's not the flavor. None of it is the flavor. It's just the shape of the kernel. So I'm gonna just keep trying popcorn. So if you guys out in public find popcorn seeds, <laughs> kernels. So, yeah. Um. So you can send them to me. I'll even try the ones that come out of the bird seed. No, I uh, no. You know, please don't you, send damn. You know, when you have all the bird seeds and stuff like that, pick the kernels out and let's see if they pop. Please don't do that. I would. Please don't do that. I would. So. So, I'm still, after this, I don't know which one I'm going to do after this. I think I might try to do the purple popcorn, just, or the blue pop, blue, the blue popcorn, because they're blue kernels, just to see what that's like. So, I'm on the hunt for the perfect thing, but I don't know if it's the batch, or if it's the quality, or if I just don't like that style of popcorn. So, I still need to eat more corn, popcorn, to f- have more data. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, did Dan like Space Firebird? It was good. It was like a 1980s anime that was more of the the artwork style of like Macross, which would be uh, what was Macross? Macross was Robotech. It was like Robotech. A lot of music on there, so it was scored kind of like Disney stuff. It was a decent movie. The ending though was interesting. We talk about that on Dantix tomorrow. The ending was interesting, but uh, I watched it all. And I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Cyber Husky suggesting you try Crown Jewel Gourmet Popcorn. Orders them for hubby. Are they are they pre-popped or you pop them yourself? Uh, she said he really likes the baby varieties. That's not on any of these. I have baby you know, white. Lady finger. Maybe we'll try that because it sounds funny. But those are tiny little kernels. Yes. Um, so anyway, I just need more. I mean, I got like 10 pounds of popcorn here. <laughs> I just need more time with like education on popcorn to... To know what's good. But that's a good way to try out a bunch of different this, varieties. This is fun. See. This is fun. It was like seven bucks. Yeah. Uh, how were the cookies? Amanda, they were amazing. We ate uh-huh. two of them. We put uh, cereal crumbs on top of one of them. They came out very cakey, very amazing. You'll have to jump back a little bit because I don't want to mess up any of the other ones. But uh, when you break them apart, it looks like a cupcake inside. It's got the the slight, like, not even crispiness, but like a little bit thicker on the outside. So it's not soft all the way on the outside like a cupcake is. But it's amazing. I highly recommend it. You guys try this. Let me know what you guys think. Post pictures if you try them. Please let me know. Uh, Cook with May sounds like she's going to try it. I don't know about any of the rest of you guys, but if you're looking for a relatively easy cookie and you want some fun sprinkles on top, this would be a good way to go. I think so. This was great. Like, this had no problems. The cookies were good. The frosting was good. It wasn't too sweet. They looked beautiful. I would recommend smushing the cookies down a little bit flatter before you bake them to try to get more of that loft house feel but nailed it these these are good so i highly recommend you guys try these the recipe can be found on the getting baked crystal pinterest page as always on the board recipes i've made on the show and we will be back tomorrow for call in dantix regular call in Mm -hmm. episode of dantix uh and i will be posting before the weekend's up probably by like sunday night because i think i I think the the, first is like tuesday or something yeah i thought the schedule was done I, I, I think it is. I'll have to double check. But yes, I think our, our calendar is done for next month. I will post that by the end of the weekend so you guys can prepare and know what is going on. Alicia, thank you so much yes, for the you, super chat. You. She says thank you so much for a fun night. Awesome. I'm glad we could entertain you tonight. Uh, Kathy can't wait for the popcorn report. 
so far, it's the report is lousy, except for <laughs> except for Hannah's and the stuff that uh... I have a tiny little bit of the of the of this one here. And this for any uh, Hannah's was good because Hannah made it herself and like it popped fine. This has been my favorite prepackaged one so far. This one's been prepackaged, yeah, so far. So that's it's that's been it's been good. Um, so oh. then I will. Yeah, I'll have to do more research to report back. Yes. Uh, Hannah wanted to know if I enjoyed the photo of Gippy last night. Yes, uh, she sent me a picture of her cat wearing a little tie, and he looks such a distinguished gentleman. It like a tie adorable. or a bow tie? No, like a tie. Oh, that's cute. It was adorable. I'll show you later. Uh, Helen with a super chat. Yes. Love your t-shirt, Dan. Finally, now I can sit and watch the show after a frustrating time to get my membership <laughs> back. Oh, and hi, Crystal. I do like it. Oh, friend. It says, uh... See, I don't only wear black. It's weird to see you not in black. You look very washed out. I do. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't they have gone with a darker gray? <laughs> I like this shirt, though. It's cute. Look, I, hey, lady. I, see, I don't just always wear black. You're stretching it out. <laughs> I'm showing you. I'm showing you. Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm glad uh, your frustration's over, Helen. My last weekend adventure wants to know how the mushroom popcorn was. It it was... What were, did, you know what? I think I feel like I burnt it a little bit. I'm learning that all popcorn don't pop the same, um, but it had really nice clumps or like it. It had a good shape. It to had it. a good shape, and yeah. they're big. It's the shape for. It's the shape for like like the dip corn with. And yeah, because you have this. It's the shape of this. Like it's the shape of these corns. See how that looks like? It almost looks like a ball. Yes. That's mushroom popcorn, which I never knew anything was different than just popcorn. Yeah, I had no idea there were different varieties, no. and Hannah educated us to let us know that there's popcorn specifically for popping. You can't just take corn. I, like, just it's not just regular... No, it's not the same corn that you eat, I think okay. is what she said. So, uh, up until recently, when I decided to be a popcorn nerd, I, I've i only had two popcorns ever. The movie popcorn, and then the popcorn of the microwave. That is it. And Jiffy Pop. And, well, yeah, Jiffy, and Pop, Jiffy Pop, which I burned. So... I've I've only had those, right? So uh, I'm new to all this, and it wasn't until we got that grab bag of different stuff that I didn't know there was any more than just what Jess and Hannah sent. But there's so many different popcorns. Um, and then I'm going to have to watch the temperature because, like I said, when I cooked the rainbow popcorn, they all popped at different temperatures. Oh, and sometimes I have accidents where, like, <laughs> I'll, put a, I'll put, like, one or two in there and put the lid on there, and when it pops, and I put the rest of it in there, and I pop it up. And I have a really good success rate. Like, almost every time, 100% success rate of popping everything right and then one time i thought i was done and i took the lid off boom and then it shot in my face bam and just popcorn went flying all there's over the popcorn house everywhere there's popcorn the outside all over the couch <laughs> under the couch cushions there's, it's literally everywhere. that's so i don't get lost I can just pick up the pieces of popcorn and go Before back. it goes off the screen, Mouse Queen with the super yes. chat. Yo, Dan, just because I wasn't up? distracted by the reach tonight, heh <laughs> heh, says nothing about all the practice I've been doing earlier in the week. I'll be ready. Ooh, and I'll be here to answer you, ask you questions. Also, we've had some new uh, winners lately, so... Yeah, yeah. some challengers. So I, I got you some competition, Mouse Queen. You're yes. welcome. Yes. Thank <laughs> and you. Hannah with the super yes, chat. Yes, thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Mouse Queen. Hannah is glad that she turned you off that microwave crap. Have a good night. Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, ab popcorn? yes, absolutely. I will never buy microwave popcorn again. In fact, I like just nothing on my popcorn. Just like empty calories. Just, I don't know. I just been eating. Look at me. I just been eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and etc. Right. <laughs> and then, so I'm just like, I'm just going to keep eating popcorn. So I really like it. So I just been shoveling it in my mouth. But like, uh, Gina says, um, maybe it's your popping technique. It really matters how you pop it. I can do fine if they're just individual. The rainbow one looked like it was a mash of all the other popcorns. And that's off. It's whatever they dropped on the floor it's whatever, slipped up right. at the end of the Which night. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Ew. I'm fine with that. So I am learning. Um, I might have to. I might even watch a popcorn YouTube video. Um, educate yourself. To educate myself. But up until we got that grab bag, I was popping popcorn just fine on the stove with the two that I got the red and then the ones from Hannah. Because you learned the temperature and the. Right. And the technique and yeah. stuff. So, right. yeah. So I guess I'm going to have to like. I can't just like lazily pop my corn i'm gonna I have can't. to i'm gonna have to figure figure it out let's wrap this up i'm starving yes so tomorrow uh, we'll see you for dantix i will be here at six o'clock pacific to test your trivia knowledge where you can call in probably wearing a black t-shirt absolutely wearing a black t-shirt yes. <laughs> mouse queen with one little more super yes. chat uh sharpens nerdy blade i'll be ready Ooh. ah chris is here omg it's friday night let's get baked Sorry, Chris. We're leaving yeah. now that you're here. We're we're we're, we're gonna go. It's Friday. Just, Let's get uh, the heck out of here. Yeah, uh, Mouse Queen, thank leaving. you so much for the super chat. It'll be a fun night tomorrow. I'll be excited, and yeah. I will be there. I'll be there. 
<laughs> so guys, we will see you tomorrow. Yes. Thank you everybody, everybody for showing up tonight. Thanks for the encouragement while we made these amazing cookies. Let me know if you try them. Please post pictures in the Getting Baked with Crystal Facebook group. And we will see you guys tomorrow night. Bye, Chris. Thanks for showing up so that we could leave. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.